Rachel Athert is unstoppable. Aaron Gwynn wins with no chain. Minard pushed himself further into the history books. Bruni wins his first World Cup race. Ah, he goes down. This day belongs to Martin Mays. This is extraordinary. Holy Toledo. What a race we've just witnessed. Canada. Mont Saint Anne is a year round mountain destination. During the winter, 69 ski trails cover more than 70 kilometres of three sides of the mountain. In summer, the beautiful landscapes also shine through and attract all manner of outdoor activities. Close to the St. Lawrence River, Mont Saint Anne is only 30 minutes' drive away from Quebec City. It's the capital of the province of Quebec and one of the oldest cities in North America. It all started in 1991, and since then it's managed to build itself a great reputation as a mecca for mountain bikes. Hello everyone, I'm Rob Warner. Welcome to another World Cup Classic. This time it's the 2013 downhill from Mont saint -Anne. Today actually marks the fourth anniversary of the tragic loss of one of the world's best downhill racers, the much-loved Canadian Stevie Smith. And I don't think there's a better way of paying tribute to the great man than to show him at his very best, here taking Canada's only ever downhill World Cup win and doing it on home soil and doing it against the odds as the heavens opened during this final, making it look like this race was done. Uh, I found it pretty emotional, actually, to watch back earlier in the week. And we've got some great guests to join us for that. G. Atherton, Brooke MacDonald, Sam Blenkinsop, Finn Isles, Mark Wallace, Gabe Fox and Claudio as well coming in for that one. And talking of great guests, I've got two joining me now. Two French world champions, hopefully, are there. Emmeline Rigaud and the reigning world champion now, Miriam Nicole. Hello, how are you? All right, hey bonjour, guys. bonsoir. Hey, bonsoir, Rob. <laughs> Salut. Hello. So, let's, I'll start with Miriam, the, the reigning world champion. This is obviously, uh, well, you know both sides of the coin in Mont Saint Anne. Great win last year, world champion there, but it's yeah. been uh, pretty cruel in the past to you. Yeah, most of the time it's been up and down, a lot of injuries there, but then a big victory last year. I started well in 2012, then it, it got a bit like like this. <laughs> so, yeah, good good remember, most of the time. Classic. And you, what's it like? I mean, probably a difficult year for you, Miriam. We're all looking forward to seeing you at the World Cups. In the rainbow jersey, yeah, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's a shame yeah, for you, isn't it? A shame, a lot of frustration, but it's not like if I'm not used to. You know, last year, one week before the season, I got injured. This year, the the event got cancelled, so I'm I'm getting used to it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just come out for a couple of races a year. It's all right. And Emily, you actually win this race we're about to watch. I mean, what's Monster Am? Was it one of the tracks you look forward to in the World Cup calendar? Was this your only win there? Uh, yeah, I just won one time there, and uh, yeah, this race was always crazy. And I think uh, I rode there when I was junior, so I maybe rode there ten times. So this race is like always be there. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The first World Cup there, I think, it was in in ninety one or something. The first downhill World Cup might have been ninety four, was it, or ninety three? But in, anyway, yeah, it's been on the World Cup calendar forever. Is it a track that, yeah. you know, obviously requires a lot of respect, Miriam? Is it? Is it one of your favourite tracks, or is it? Would you find? I mean, it's so physical well, as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's. I wouldn't say it's one of my favourite because it's a big deal. You know, Monsantan, it's scary. It's it's really fast, and but once you attack it, once you're into it, you can have fun. But like, it's a big one, yeah. Absolutely. And, and uh, Emmeline, for you, I mean, was it a track that you used to look forward to? Yeah, yeah. I Does always that loved that. Like? Uh, Mont saint -Anne. Yeah, it changed a lot, but it's always like the same style of, you know, races, like full on and you have to be on like directly because if you are not on, it's like you can't go fast. <laughs> no, and, yeah, you have yeah. to enjoy the ride and yeah, it's like now this, I, I love this, this track, yeah. Yeah, it's an awesome spectacle every year. I mean, you know, we've been going there forever. I'd never get bored of it. We want you at home to send yeah. in your questions, please. Uh, on the, you can use the chat 
on Red Bull TV on the web version or on Twitter using the hashtag MTB Classic. So send your questions for me and for these, these uh, women and everyone during, during this whole race. So I think we're going to get on with the race now. We're going to watch uh, a course preview first with Aaron Gwynn. Aaron Gwynn's going to take us down this one. Have a look at this. Hey, this is Aaron Gwynn. Welcome to Mount St. Anne. Just going to take you guys down the track. One of my favorite tracks. I think it's uh, got a little bit of everything a real downhill track should be, so let's go check it out. This is probably the fastest part of the whole track. It's pretty cool. Kind of an old school section. Sweet. It would be cool if there was a camera up here on it and race runs because it gets pretty wild. Yeah, we're just dropping into the first wood section. Uh, just a little bit up from here. It looks like they've done a lot of work and a lot of changes. I don't know if I'd say it's for the better since it's just turning into a big bike park, but uh, it is what it is. They definitely put a lot of effort into it, so that's cool. <laughs> Freeway. Easy. Yeah, for me, probably my favorite section is uh, the one right under the lift. This is just classic Mount St. Anne. It's uh, the section that's been here forever. It's kind of, I think, what it's known for. It's always on video, and there's always a ton of people going crazy. And uh, it's just a good section, really fast. It's always has this kind of scrub jump in the middle of it. Yeah, it always feels like you're never going to stop for that burn down there, but you do. So it's just a cool section, and I think everybody enjoys it. Yeah, it's just a good rock section that's been here. It looks kind of the same from the last few years. So usually when it gets wet, it gets pretty tricky. But um, yeah, it's good. It's got, I mean, okay flow. There's a couple little spots to hit and like little doubles and stuff you can do if you hit it right. So pretty sweet. Yeah, we're just uh, right before the finish line. Just kind of drop off this bridge over here and do this kind of natural rock step down line. It used to kind of run down and do a couple of berms and have a bit of a sprint to the finish and now it's you know it's kind of just a straightaway with a couple jumps which uh, looks all right so should be good. This is definitely kind of the spot of the track where you're usually hanging pretty good and you're, you're looking forward to getting to the finish line. Yeah man I think that overall as a track it's, it's going to be a lot faster than last year as far as how fast you can ride it because of how they've opened everything up. So that's it for the track walk here at Mount St. Anne. I think it'll be a really good racetrack on Sunday so hope everybody enjoys it. I bet that uh, Emily, that big drop off at the end there that was um... That's where you had a big crash right at the end of your career, wasn't it? It was, was that, how long had that been in? Was this the first year that it went in in 2013? I don't remember it much before then. Sorry? I, I, oh, sorry, Emily, I couldn't know. The big booter at the bottom that Aaron Gwynn was stood on, I mean, that's that was where you had that big crash in 2015 that kind of finished your career really wasn't it that was where it happened I mean yeah it must bring us back some memories looking at it there and, and was that the first time in 2013 was that the first time it had been in can you remember yeah 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 it's the first time like uh, they do the two big jumps at the end and I remember like we were all watching the legend who will do it and who will jump it and it was a bit stress yeah. <laughs> so we've got Tani Seagrave on track here already looking stylish over there holding the front wheel up a little bit of a manual opening from that same style very different kit and bike all the time her father was telling me that she's currently running cut spikes where's she riding for intense yeah and that's something that she learned from Rachel Atkinson, the different conditions yeah. that you could use them in. No. So it's great it? that she's uh, picking up all yeah. the stuff with other riders and putting them all to good use. Yeah, she's having a good ride. Looking good on these technical yeah, sections. Of course, she lives in Morzine. 
So uh, no lack of good riding for her. And you'd think that would be a big advantage on a course like this, Cunny. It's you, weird you know, to see a so bike at these days. It's long and rough. It's hard to train for tracks They look like a lot this, smaller, really, the bikes, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's not many, many of the tracks Small like this wheels. around the world. That's what makes it so Yeah, special. that's right. Everything got bigger with the bigger wheels, didn't it? Tracks and her experience in the World Cup season circuit is just uh, getting more and more. And she's learning the whole time. Absolutely brilliant. Good ride from uh, in Andorra. Yeah, Tali was on um, well. on intense there. So yeah, you're right. Down the gears. I think nothing to untoward down there. The track hasn't changed well, that much, eh? Over afternoon. the years, really. It, uh, oh yeah, I do remember. It's hard on the bikes here, Kelly. Wheels just get smashed. So she was one, one of the first the girls to send that jump, and she was like, she's really now so confident on it. Oh, oh yeah. Leaders, go leaders, lead is Jersey to lead in the women's it. World Cup, that. junior <laughs> World Cup at the time. Style it already. And she's rewarded with a green light, 6.9 up for Tali Seagrove. That's a great seconds. run. Good run, eh? Into first place. Incredible. Not only the first girl we've seen clearing that jump. You probably enjoy this run, Miriam. Of turning the bike. Yeah, oh, here's me. So back up to top, we got Miriam in the car now, starting out. <laughs> So I remember French doing that jump in practice, Miriam, but I can't remember doing it on my race run. So wheels, it looks so small. So yes, that was the year so where Remy won in Van Nuys. Like That's right. That's right. He just won, actually. It was the race before down. this, wasn't it? It probably yeah. gave you a lot of confidence, They're right? In here. In here so hot. Yeah, it was good times the, then. Uh, yeah, big change of the season for the team. There's one bit of the track that definitely has never changed. Miriam holding a nice straight line through there, Connie. I think I'm riding you find it? Well. Don't you, you see? think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't look bad. And, uh, really to hold on to the bike down this Let course. the time tell us. I can't remember so how well you did here, actually. I can have a look. <laughs> no, it didn't do that good, but I don't know why. <laughs> You're flying, it looks like, but I ain't seen you do anything wrong yet. Yeah. Yeah. I think I went off the track on start. <laughs> not really. yeah. Did you really or not? <laughs> no, I don't no, think so. Is that fair up there again? Hard to get up out that saddle and pedal. Oh, gets the front wheel. Ooh, the big case. So, I don't think I did that, Jen. Well and Emily, I don't think you did it either. No, no. <laughs> Close. But, but going around that jump didn't lose you two and a half seconds, did it? So. No, the, the chicken line wasn't that bad. No, yeah. I don't think so. Someone like told me it was second about a second. Or like this. Yeah. Yeah. And you've, but you, yeah, Miriam, you broke your ankle on that jump, didn't you? Years after this race, right? Didn't you have yeah, some problems that with it? Was like. So that jump, I did it only one time in my life. That was this year in 2013 in practice. And then I've never done it again because, yeah, I hurt my ankle on it and I still, like, uh, didn't uh, do it. So maybe next year I was supposed to do it this year. That was my main goal. But, uh, yeah, we'll see next year. Well, it didn't, it don't, it don't matter. You'll come away with a world champion jersey. It was all right, whatever decision yeah, you made. Yeah. We got a question in from... CKY78, I'll ask this to you, Emmeline. What have been your favourite parts of the Mont saint -Anne track and which parts do you like the least? Yeah, I think it's the one under the lift because you feel like everyone is watching at you and you are flying to the jump to the, and you are on the high speed and it's like really nice part. Yeah, I know what you mean. That big open straight, you can see it, can't we, actually on the feed? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And what about you, Miriam? Sorry, so Emily, for me, you got another definitely... bit? Oh. You're good, Mama? Yeah. So, yeah, it's the, <laughs> the, the rock garden because I like it so much because it, it looks so hard on TV, but I feel like riding it, it's so much fun. Well, it's quite rough, but it's so much easier than how it looks like. So when you, you come into these rocks, it's like you're a bit tired and you you know once you've done these rocks, you're like, yeah, it's almost done. So, yeah, I really love coming into these rocks as it's race. Even in the wet? Yeah, because the, the rocks, they are quite grippy. So are they? they are not 
Yeah, so I'm not that bad. Like, you know, it's not like in Lourdes or some other race where it's really, no. really slippery. In Mont saint the so rocks are pretty good. Good friends. Did you find them all right in the wet? I found them quite slippery, Emmeline. I don't know about you. Although I was on plastic tyres in the 90s, not the cool, good, good yeah. stuff you got these days. <laughs> you can, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's get back Emoji. to the racing then. I think we're going to see Morgan Shah next. Let's have a look at this. Here she is. Oh, In the World Champion guy. jersey, look. So, look at that. All three, three French no, female Shah. World Champions on screen at once. World Champion, as you can see. From oh, the didn't she hit that? <laughs> so, twice on the podium this year so far, Morgan Shah. Rider for MS Mondraker. Side for that team at the start of this year. And she's up, 1.1 seconds up. Great ride from her. Look at that, 59 kilometers an hour through the speed trap. 60K, yeah, nearly 60K. Where's your uh, rainbow fast, jersey fast at the moment, Miriam? Just trying to stay off the brakes. It's just here. Two straights there. Come on, let's have a look at it. You, you know, you need to show it off a bit. You ain't get, you're not getting as much, as much air time with that jersey as you should this year, I feel. Let's get it on air. You can see that I think that's right a there. real one. Yeah, oh. that's the true one the from the podium. Look at that. Of my parents. <laughs> Lovely <laughs> job, <Ray. laughs> So definitely lost a bit of time in that wood there, Cunny. Yeah, shame for her. that. You, you can see just demonstrated how much these straight lines. Oh, Morgan pulled off some running there, gang, eh, in 2012. Yeah. Like that. It was yeah. incredible, wasn't Crazy it? Crazy run. But yeah, as we say, just can demonstrate. I miss the her value racing downhill, really. Like it, it may be harder to get onto them. They may often be off camber and have obstacles. Yeah, yeah it's it's she, it's she's a pretty aggressive rider. She carries more speed through that section. Really, so she's got a big side. As well. Safely up onto the top of that bridge. Through that left turn there. She's trying to carry as much speed as she can. She's gone no enduro, really right? Do you still see much of her? Or? Speed into that section. Yeah, we, so I see her. Not, like not too much, but she, but she's still, a lot she more in enduro. Four, she's riding for five foot, yeah, now. Oh, cool. Who's? That was close. I was a bit worried that she didn't have enough speed coming in. She yeah. Lost a bit in she was good on her day, wasn't she? And just a little bit short on that double. Really good. Emily Siegenthaler. Emily. Riding for Scott to start racing then. Fourth here in 2012 and sixth in 2011. And uh, Siegenthal, well, one of the big what? guns of women's downhill Fast racing. Fast into that left, dude. One. Oh, goes massive off that drop there. Cool. Course, I really feel like we're yeah. going so much yeah. faster yeah. than we are oh, going oh, now, but I think it's the wheels <laughs> a lot. Well, you can see her. Barely in control on that far section down there. It's, it's getting faster much. now with a big wheel, eh? Threading through those rocks. Look at her, just holding a straight line. Maybe that was a year. Was it 27? You know, that was that really the beginning. 650. I think it was on the on the 2014 when we start. Yeah. Well, I think she was one of the first. So I think like she's in 650B now. Yeah. You think? You might Maybe. be right with Scott's team. Uh, I can't remember, but Claudio will be on a bit. We can ask him. <laughs> not, not that he'll know what wheel size his team was using. <laughs> <laughs> they don't look as small as the other ones. The others, yeah. Off these drops, then that front wheel hold up. Yeah. We're going to see some high speed Last wood session is where you arrive and said, OK, I'm here, I almost finish. <laughs> you don't want to make a mistake in there and touch a brake, do you, or a fit either, you know? <laughs> yeah, and that rock garden before the bridge is it's so much harder than uh, how it looks. Taken off air, mate. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah. It looks like everyone is jumping. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. Good run from her. Yeah. Really good. No mini mistakes, huh? No. She attacked hard, didn't she? Yeah. Man on now. Twenty years old, but very impressive to see him over it. Now we've got Man on Carpenter up top. Coming hot off that, a second place. You'd already the, been uh, twice world champ by this point, right, Emily? She also had second place at the uh, end. Yes. Twice elite. Yeah. 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 2009 and 2007. 
uh, forgot actually to send one. Eleven, I think. I think yeah. Uh, maybe in eleven. What? Eleven, yeah. Too many tiles. Can't remember them all. <laughs> no, but at the end you forgot with the years. Like crazy. <laughs> Look yeah, that's right. Flying. Yeah. Yeah. It's going good. That's your race. She's shown us this year with those two second places. She's got the skills. She can ride under pressure. And Carpenter. And she's tall, so it's like she absorbed like really like. Incredible riding from man on here. Has that style where she just keeps the bike low on the ground. So I'm pretty sure she was at 650 B as well. And that year, remember, we had them for the team in in the autumn. So yeah, that was the beginning that year of the big wheels. Uh, yes, because especially because it was a world shot in uh, Peter Marisburg and we need the big wheels. So we probably tried before at some races. Mm. And I even had. This is a really fast run. Really good. Watch this. I mean, another world champ, Manon, as well. You can see why when she rides like this. Yeah. Ooh. Oh my god. Seven seconds. Wow. Seven. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> How old are you here, Miriam? At this race? Uh, I was 23. Uh, 23, so still, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> French national champion this year. What were you two? Where yeah. were you two? Yeah. Uh, where was the French champ that year, Mamou? Uh, uh, it was. Mary Ben, no, peut-être? Maybe no, Mary Ben, no. no. It, no it's I won many bit. Thirteen, thirteen. Oh yeah. Les or? No, pas les or. I would say Oz and Oz. Oh no, you won in Oz. Yeah. Dibs, help me. Where was national champion? Thirteen. <laughs> Florian also on Claudio's team. He had two women on the team back then, look. Yeah. Yeah, I seem to remember him being on the 27 and a half maybe there as well, yeah. Uh, so yeah, national champ was in Oz, near l'Alpe d'Huez. Okay. This section here really close. I've seen watched it in practice, and some of the riders coming in really hot and not able to carry that speed over a couple of drops. So a little bit tentative coming in can really help with the riders' exit speed. But a French national champion. A sprint right when you don't need it. World ranking number five. The numbers <laughs> last year, of course, were their World Cup positions this year. It's the UCI world ranking for this rider. So that bridge that was bridge. a big deal for us, for the girls. Right Pretty hard to, to make. Uh, let's see what she can do. Down Where's Florian well. these days? She might be climbing. She's she's doing a lot of climbing and hiking, and so she might be in a, at the in a top mountain of the somewhere. Mountain <laughs> for the lockdown, you know. Yeah, she's camping out. <laughs> Here we go, Emily. Okay. Let's have a look at this. The little rocket. The pocket <laughs> rocket. <laughs> uh, you can tell she had small wheel compared to the other yeah. girls. Look at the time there. Yeah, it's one of the bats we were talking before. I love these bats. There's like so much people watching. So yeah, I don't know if you remember, but when Mumu was on fire, you know she was really on fire. It was not like <laughs> half. Oh she was yeah. Just like pushing the li on Here, the edge. Look how I slide. <laughs> I tell you. Do you know? Do you know Emily, no, I feel like Mar Marine Cabrero reminds me of you when I watch her race. She's like aggressive and you know what I mean? Like she's, I find her and she attacks like you do almost. Yeah, bit, yeah, 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 exactly. So she's going to want to step it up and see if she can get a win. She either wants a fifth or a first. But riding like this, this is why you're two time world champ. I think Emily would take the number one so look, she's got energy left. She's Give not sitting down. Oh, yeah, a little bit. A bit. Too hard this time. Big rock 
Shame for me. I've seen a rider end up in that stream down at the bottom right, so... Uh, yeah. Good he is hard. There's always a jump. We jump and we know. Yeah, I, I do remember, remember you didn't time. make it. <laughs> yeah, I tried a couple times on a, on a training, but for the race, when you do full run, it's really hard. Yeah. You, ju you just smashed that race. Woo. Yeah, like fastest. I was on fire. <laughs> yeah, I looked it. I mean, did it feel race. like a winning run at the time? For you, Emily, did it feel like yeah. a winning run, that? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it. <laughs> She's going to be back racing this year thanks to this replay. <laughs> I oh, heard yeah, that, too. right? I heard that. Yeah, this fits well. Tom T's asked, are you still working as a physio uh, at the moment or are you making a comeback to downhill racing? Because, you know, you could. <laughs> yeah, no, like, oh, I'm still working as a physio, but sometimes when I watch a race and, uh, yeah, I just remember and I just think, oh, maybe I should try one or two. And after I just think, oh, no, I'm done. I will not do it. I will. Oh, no, I know. <laughs> it's a bit, you know, you have two voice. I will. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, that would be so good. Yeah. I really wish you would. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, but yeah, I'm getting older. Yeah, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, yeah, it'd be good, wouldn't it? Although all the other women don't need another fast French woman getting, you know, coming back. You know what I mean? It's like pretty yeah, one-sided. Yeah. There's a lot yeah, of yeah. you. Yeah, no, but, but if you, you still have it a was few months like... for this year, you still have a few months to be ready for this year. Uh, yeah, 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 maybe. <laughs> I need to find a bike and <laughs> uh, everything. We can actually. get your bike. We can get your bike. <laughs> Look at uh, Max on the phone. It's done. It. We're getting Max uh, yeah. on the phone. It's uh, done, eh? I can take a uh, million's ones. Uh, yeah. The second bike. <laughs> Max will give you one for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> wouldn't he? Eh? Right. We got. It, yeah, it does feel a little bit like there is a comeback on the cards. Yeah, you know, I don't want to put any pressure on you, but yeah, it could be happening. Sam's asked a question here, Emmeline. How do you see French downhill at the moment? Uh, but I see it good. Um, we have we have really good rider, and yeah, the French downhill is going good at this moment. So yeah, it's like um, we always been a, a strong nation. So yeah. That's right. Sabrina Johnny, yeah. actually, and Rachel Atherton have the most wins in Mont Saint Anne each. Just to, how many do you think? How many times do you think they won here each? Yeah, four, uh, five four? times each. So there's ten years five. of winning wow. between those two women. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whoa. Crazy. So of course, it's true. I mean, what I got you know, you got Sabrina Johnny and Caroline, you know, Chausson as well. I mean, you, you are. In a legacy Getting of gold. brilliant French women, it's, tr it's fair to say. Yeah. And I, I must say, I really enjoyed, you know, watching last year as well with the men as well. Watching Amory and um, Loic battle was incredible, wasn't it? Yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Really good. Like a great battles. <laughs> it was a good. It was good. Well, you haven't won this race yet because Rachel Atherton is still at the top. Yeah. <laughs> at the top, all the pressure on her, but she's been here every time this year, but one, and she's fastest qualifier everywhere except in Valnor, right? Yeah, absolutely incredible year from Rachel. If you look back over her stats of the season, it is it's unheard of, really. She's won every single round on the first round in Fort William, second the second round in Val de Sol, and then the third in Valnor. So incredible form she's on at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. The form of her life, as is her brother. So railing those big bang turns there, Rachel Atherton, two times a winner here, 08 and last year. And uh, Atherton looking quick. The split is going to tell us though. Oh, she no, she's, she's 10, 10 seconds back. back. So she's had a problem. Well, we don't know so what. So 10 so seconds back, Emily. That must have been a nice uh, feeling Rachel at the bottom, Atherton. seeing that come up. Yeah, yeah. It's always yeah, like, there is two feelings, you know. The one like, you are stressed because you know like, someone can beat you. And the moment where, like, you don't know what to do, like, you know you will win, but you are stressed because you don't want to show you are like, you know, too impatient. I don't know if you understand, but. 
Yeah, 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 yeah I think like so. Yeah, no. you, yeah. yeah, you don't want to celebrate when someone else, because yeah. someone else has done bad, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think I would, I, I prefer when, you know, like someone is really tight to you and you yeah. fight by just a little bit, but it's like, you know, it's a great battle. It's not like, oh, someone crashing. Oh, I won. Good. She had a bad crash. That was yeah. horrible, wasn't it, eh? Uh, Whoa. Uh, you know, like, it's interesting to hear you, Miriam, say that rock section's easy, because it, it, which is great to hear you say, but it does catch riders out, doesn't it? I mean, every year we see people go down in there. But it is easier than it looks, how it looks, yeah. because it looks so bad when you look, you know, when I talk about Monsanto to people, they are like, oh, did you see that rock garden? It looks gnarly, but, like, for me, this rock garden is harder than the one before. Every race it's round really? in 2012. Yeah, because you're and coming fast and there is like tricky rocks. The big yeah, one, you know, they don't move. The clean sheet, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they, that's right. Well, yeah, that's right. They're big slabs, aren't they? Rachel's still sending that look. Yeah. That was the first time, yeah. right, that year yeah, that you'd beaten her, Emily. Yeah. She'd won the first three races. She won Fort William, Val de Sole and Val Nord. What did that feel like to you as well? Was it, you know, it must have been nice to be, because you've been battling hard yeah, till then back the as well. yeah like to win this race is like you know it's kind of Monsantin and for William is a race you uh, you know on your career you would like to to win so it's like you can put a dot and so oh yeah I won it I won it this one it's like yeah it's a real like yeah it's nice feelings yeah, I mean, this and Fort William, yeah, they are the two most historic World Cups. That must mean something. I mean, for you, Miriam, to take Worlds at Mont Saint Anne, they even speak French there. I mean, that must have been about as good as it gets, apart from winning it in France, right? Yeah, definitely. You know, it's a, it's like a really big classic, legendary tracks, and winning there is like somewhere something to stick in your career. Absolutely is. By 4.2 seconds, Emily. That was a good win, eh? You beat me by 12 yeah, seconds. Yeah, it's oh good. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you should come back racing this year. I'm, I'm ready to, to beat you now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really if Emily had come back, she'd still be pushing yeah. for wins, I reckon. Oh yeah, I, I really miss her to see her and to battle with you. Yeah, come on Emily, make a comeback <laughs> next year. You've probably got the rest of this season off, no, yeah, I don't know yeah. if we're going racing or not, you know what I mean? But you can get, it's got plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> I need to, ta to start re uh, training right now, I'm going. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you look so strong. Oh, yes. You're that kind of person that doesn't train and be strong. <laughs> yeah, right. like, but I need and to. And the rest of the season, I mean, Rachel won the next race, which was in Hafjall up in Norway. Um, but you came yeah. back and won the finals in Leergang, right, Emmeline? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you pushed her pretty it's, hard uh, in the end. Yeah, yeah, because we were like uh, on the big battle for the for the overall. So I try everything I have to do, and I think I remember if she she do a mistake i could like win the the overall so i always like be really like close but i never won the overall so <laughs> why is that right yeah that's right <laughs> miriam on the other hand's done both in the last two years isn't ya it's been a it's been a cracking couple yeah. of years in me two yeah it's there have been one year between two so 2017 yeah. and 2019, yeah, good, done. Yeah, it was brilliant, <laughs> eh? What, what sort of, uh, compared to, you, you know, like we say, I mean, it was Rachel, Emily, was Rachel your fiercest competitor in your career? Did, was she your Sorry? biggest rival? For your, was Rachel your biggest rival in your career? Yeah, and we've always been together because we are one and a half year difference. And when I was junior, uh, second, she was junior first, and we always like be uh, together. So it always been a, a battle between uh, each other. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and Miriam, I mean, she's been one of your biggest rivals as well. I mean, you've been elite yeah, for a long yeah. time as well, haven't you? Forget now how yeah, long it's yeah, been. Exactly, but... Yeah, yeah. Rachel, I feel like I've been racing like yeah, a bit. She's two or three years older than me, so yeah, I've been racing with her forever. That's yeah, what I, I would both... like to say forever. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a question in from Watty53. Is there anything either of you did in preparation on that day that particularly stands out in your memory? Let's start with you, Emmeline. Uh, I don't get the question. <laughs> um, do you remember, did you do anything in the build-up to the race that you particularly remember that, you know, stands out to you is there any difference in your normal pre-race warm-up or anything like that or um no I, I don't think you need like uh to be to do something special you just need to really focus on on the race because it's like a really long race and with the speed you really need to be focused and not make one mistake because if you do one mistake is done because you go out the track so yeah it's like yeah. the preparation you have to do for this one is really to be focused focus yeah yeah good Miriam, would you, anything from you there to um, add? yeah it was i remember it was exactly the same deal than last year to make the decision of doing that last jump or no so i remember <laughs> like that was a big deal <laughs> Again. <laughs> did you know last year that your run was... I mean, you did it last year, right, at Worlds, you said, didn't you? No, I didn't do it. No, you didn't do it, excuse me. And you, did you know <laughs> you were on a good run then? And you went and you, you still, even knowing, thinking that, you know, you're on a good run, it might be enough to win, you still wouldn't have done it? Well, yeah, you know, I made the decision before, so I was ready to lose even for one second because of that, but I didn't feel ready and confident enough to do it. So, a yeah, big decision, and, big time. And as and as we said in the commentary when we were watching the race back then, you know, it's one thing to jump it in practice, but my goodness, like unless you've ridden Mont Saint Anne and or raced Mont Saint Anne top to bottom, you got you can't really explain how you can even ride a bike at that point. It's pretty like it's one of the races that even made the soles of my feet hurt. Yeah, it's you know pretty intense. I mean? So yeah, to make it to the top to the bottom is pretty hard. Mm. Yeah. Is it still now? I mean, you actually train hard these days. Is it still incredibly physical? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you can even watch. Them. Yeah, it's yeah, like have... even like when. You... Oh, sorry, ma'am. Yeah, you have. You, you, you always have to push. So even if you train really hard, racing Monsanto is pretty tough. Yeah. <laughs> two weeks ago, two weeks ago we had Paul William as a World Cup classic. <laughs> which one? Which is which is more physical, Mint St Anne or Fort William? Mint Fort William. Sorry, I would say Fort William. Would you? Yeah, it's you know the motorway at the end is really hard. Oh yeah, yeah, it sucks, doesn't mm -hmm. it? <laughs> Emmeline, what would you say? Same for you. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, the motorway at the end is like, and you are like, like this, <laughs> and you have yeah. still to do the jump. So, <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah, tough, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I think it's right. flatter for William, so that's why you make it harder. Yeah, the bottom section, especially in it. I mean, it's not. Fort William actually, like the whole, it's not just the motorway, it's actually the gradient's gone quite a long way from above there, you, you know, that's the trouble. We've got one in from Lou Dog. Uh, what would you say is the biggest thing that has changed in racing from 2013 to now? Emmeline first. Um, I think, yeah, me mechanical, you know, it's like the bikes improve so much. So, like, for the racing is like... Uh, a big difference and especially for the big wheels and even the work on the suspension so i think now that changed a lot and you can go faster and faster and yeah and on the track i think there is yeah more jumps now huh Miriam, i think so yeah, yeah so i think there is a, a bit more jumps but it's even faster now because we could mm. see there were still the berm under the gondola and we had one more woods, and now there is a really fast pit section. So 
it was a tiny bit slower. Yeah, perfect. You would have been stood at the bottom this day watching the men's race, which we're going to watch in a, in a minute or two now. Do you remember Stevie Smith's run? And obviously, yeah. you know, tell us a little bit about Stevie as well as you remember him, Emmeline. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Emma, yeah, I remember. Sorry, sorry uh, I don't get you. Yeah, no, I remember. It's a delay. It's, it's a... Yeah, on this on this uh, race, and I remember him like he was a great racer and like a, a good man. So yeah. It was. What's your I don't know what they said. You know, it's like. <laughs> It's Stevie. No, you're right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's right. It was this, this. This is this is Stevie. What we're going to watch, isn't it? I mean, this this to yeah. me, this run really sort of like mm -mm. it's him. It's how he lived his life, mm. flat out. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. flat out. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Mira, anything you'd that like to year, say about Stevie? Or? Yeah, that year between him and G was just so great. And you know, like last year between Abori and Loic, the battle really reminds me of that year between him and G, so good memories. That's right, Great absolutely. Listen, thank you very much for joining us. It's been uh, an absolute pleasure to watch that race back with you. And uh, I hope you're going to yeah. hang around. We're going to watch the men's in a moment or two, but thanks very much. Thank you. Emmeline, thank you. Miriam, and at home, <laughs> we'll be back with the men's race in a few moments' time. Bye. Pump up your tires for the Bike Channel on Red Bull TV. And check out the best live events, feature films, and shows. Download the Red Bull TV app for free. And sign in to watch all of our content offline. Download the app now. Rob Warner. I'm taking the best young athletes on a quest to ride the world's greatest trails and meet the people who live in some of the wildest places on earth. Never had myself down as an Attenborough type. Yes. Ah, get off! <laughs> <laughs> the first sight of the Himalayas. You know, lions take the weakest and slowest rider. Oh, my word! Rob Warner's Wild Rides, now available on Red Bull TV. Anywhere around here you can get a cappuccino. Ready for a ride in style? A free ride mountain bike film combining progressive riding with cutting edge filmmaking. Once you start something, you gotta go all the way in. It's such a satisfying feeling. It's really hard to explain. A film oozing with the effortless style of some of the most talented riders of the coastal crew. Motive, now available on Red Bull TV. Well, welcome back to this World Cup Classic here on Red Bull TV. And look at the boys we've got in the hood here. Look at this, Claudio Calori, G Atherton, who's fresh out of the gym, and Brooke What's McDonald. Up, Hello, how are you all, lads? How are you doing? Nice Good to see you all. Nice to see you. Brooke, I've got to start with you. I haven't seen you since um, your injury. How's your recovery going, mate? You're looking like, to be honest, you're looking like you're going to peak too soon if the races start up again soon. <laughs> um, now the recovery is going good, Rob. Just, um, I mean, we've been in lockdown for the last six weeks, so haven't really been doing much. Just been uh, riding the road bike, um, yeah, most days. So feeling pretty uh, fit and strong at the moment. But yeah, I'm looking forward to to getting back in the gym. I bet you are, mate. I bet you are. Send us, a, just tell you now, please send us your questions via the chat on Red Bull TV. You can only access that on the web version or on Twitter using hashtag MTB Classic. Gee, this was a big year for you, 2013. You locked horns with Stevie Smith start to finish and uh, it was, it was, you know, as Emmeline just said then, we watched Amory and uh, Loic battle last year. I mean, this was much the same back in 2013. How did you, how do you remember it? Yeah, definitely a battle, and um, you know, I think that's I think that's what you want in a race season. You know, I think all the riders come in hoping to be not just competitive, but to be you know throwing themselves against it and, and battling other people. Because you know, when you're riding at home and you're and you're, and you're riding well, you know, you feel fast, but it, it takes someone else to like push you on and take someone else to really bring the best out of you. And 
And this year when I was battling with Stevie, you know, that's exactly what happened. You know, he would drive me on, I pushed him on and, you know, race after race, we were just pushing further and further each race all the way through the season. Yeah, and it, it all came down, didn't it, to one run in Lear Gang at the end of the year, right? That was... Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, all the way, it was literally up until the last round and, you know, the nerves, I remember, I was going into that last race and, you know, I knew it was going to be a tough one. I knew Stevie was strong. I knew he was, you know, finding his form. Um, you know, I was I was coming into it knowing that unless I could deliver absolutely everything at that race, I, I was going to lose the championship. And, you know, it, it came down to that final run and it, 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 was, it was exciting, you know. It was awesome. Yeah, it was. I, I won't forget commentating on it. It was absolutely awesome. Claudio, hello. How are you, mate? All right? Yeah, extremely well, and uh, I actually see a chance there for me to get back into racing this year because everyone else is in lockdown and Switzerland is lucky enough to be able <laughs> to go out and ride. So uh, while these guys have to stay home, I'm riding every day. So, uh, guys, yeah, I'm you're looking back. in shape, mate. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> what can you answer this? What size wheels were your team on in this race? We couldn't we couldn't remember in the women's race if it was 27 and a half. Were you the first to go to 27 and a half? It, it rings a bell. Yes, uh, we, I think we were the first team, but not everyone in the team was happy about that. So I, I think that Brendan refused to write them while, while some yeah. other writers have already written them. Yeah. I seem to remember that. Look, let's get the race going on here. We're going to chat throughout it anyway. But, uh, Brooke, I mean, you were, you were teammates with, um, with Stevie as well, weren't you, previous to this? This is one of his finest moments, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, this year was pretty... Well, yeah, this year was unreal from uh, Stevie. He just, yeah, like G said before, he found form throughout the season and just ended on such a strong note. I was unfortunately injured at, um, at the time so uh, when uh, he won that race that final race in the gang I was sitting on the couch watching it but yeah it was probably one of the best days uh, I've ever had watching watching someone uh, win an overall yeah yeah it was it was an incredible season here's Flo Paye eh? the size of the man eh and how did he ride a bike that small that's what I want to know I love watching Flo I think he's one of my favourite boys to watch he's such a, a tall lanky youth he's got, got such a lazy style on the bike it probably looks lazy it's probably not, a, not as lazy for him yeah I'm sure it's, it's hard work at the moment <laughs> Carry good speed through them, not just clip them at the so end. So most of the guys line. here that are going to be on 26 so inch wheels, right? Fastest part of this course. That section there where we saw Jafter have a Yeah, I'm pretty sure. It's wild to think that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's mad to think riding down Monster Town on 26 inch wheels was even possible, you know, with how rough it is. Yeah, and it, it, it's crazy that we, I've been pushing the 27 and a half, but I've been one of those guys who thought that we would never go to 29 in downhill, and now there we are. No, and he was great, had a great ride in Val de Sol this year, where he was eighth, his first World Cup top ten since he took sixth in Maribor, Alt Maribor, Slovenia, all the way back in 2007. Robin, Claudio, I got a question for you. When you raced here, how, uh, how long was uh, the track you guys raced on? Tall and short, but... Uh, well, I raced here the first time, was in 1994, and it was a completely different track over... If you're looking up the hill to the right a bit, it was long as well. I think I put it up on Instagram the other day. It was about seven minutes long, I think. It was different. And then I think in 94, certainly, sorry, in 95, it, it probably went to this track. Yeah. Yeah, I think, or, you know, similar to this track. Claudio, can you remember? You weren't racing then, were you, Claudio? I've shown me age here, haven't I? Yeah. <laughs> My first one was in 98 at World Championships. So uh, oh, sugar. it was kind of it was kind of similar to this one here. Uh this rock section here was in there already and I I love this track all the way from the first time I raced there. It's it's my favorite track every year and it's also where I I had my best result ever. You got yeah, the podium in you, Claudia? Yeah, fourth, yeah. 
in 2002. Is it a video of you going crazy, eh, Claudio? Yeah, I was in a skin suit, too. Would you believe it? Here's <laughs> the number one play, the series leader at the moment here, G. Hey, this brings back some good memories, doesn't it, mate? I was down early. I'm, I'm trying to remember why I'm down so early, but I, I've no idea what happened. Yeah, big crash, G. Yeah, it was probably a crash. I mean, most years it was here, so... Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't... I'm pretty sure you had a big crash off of it, um, fly... Fly over in the um in the open section. I ran like just down below yeah, from yeah, uh, here. Fly off. Yeah, that was like it was huge. This section wasn't it? I think that yeah. was in 2012. You did that, G. I might be wrong. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. Yeah, because that was in that was in a time training. That was that was practice run. I don't think it was a qualifier. No, I've just looked at uh, yeah, notes. There you go. I just looked at my notes. 2012. G went through the speed trap. At 53 kilometers an hour on his head. <laughs> <laughs> Which <Classic>. is accurate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Surprisingly, I remember that. <laughs> I don't think he was too upset after. Gee, you'd won round one in Fort William this year as well. I mean, you you were you you were riding as well as you ever had really at this point, weren't you? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, I think um I think me and Rach won the first two rounds this year, and then the third round I went second and Rach won, and and I remember That's feeling right. like I'd let the side down a bit, you know. That's right. You're dead right. Yeah, you won. You won Fort William and you won uh, Val de Sole. And then Remy yeah, yeah, Tyrion beat you, beat you in Val Nord with that inspired run. Do you remember? It was incredible at the bottom. His bottom section was met mad. But you were still second, mate. It wasn't bad. That turn they just showed where I blew out wide with my foot off. I remember coming into it and as I braked, my brakes just, my back brake just went to the bar and like had a, a flag <sighs> of literally nothing for like two seconds. <laughs> Good time though. Three and a half up on needles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gee, that same thing happened to me in uh, what year was that? I think in '99, halfway down this track, I lost my rear brake. I hit it on a rock, and I did the, I did the second half of the of the whole track only just with the front brake. And it was the fastest enough, he's ever got. It was his best race run he ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you won that one, Claudio. <laughs> it was like no, a but you know, like, from split three down. <laughs> there are some, some really narrow sections towards the end where you go in between the trees. And I remember that, you know, hitting the front brake at full speed would be lethal, so I just decided not to, not breaking at all and go through the trees at no breaks. Um, that was a scary one, but I, I, w I still remember it kind of 20, 20 years later. <laughs> well, I think I was, I think on this section, you know, we were, we were struggling all weekend with breaks. I remember, you know, it's such a long, fast, rough track, you know, I was, I would be boiling them up. You'd be glazing rotors. Oh, they'd yeah. be fading. They'd be they'd be boiling. You know everything that you could have had go wrong went wrong. And race on. I thought I got it, and then right towards the end, it's, it just literally to the bar, and I felt it fade, and then you know it was back, and then it, it was literally like on and off for a bit, you know. Yeah, it's real rough on the bikes, wasn't it? There, it really is. A, yeah, it's, it's, especially back in the day. Brooke, yeah, it's a hard Brooke, one for the bikes. It really is. Brooke, you've obviously, you know, had that massive injury from there last year, but I guess it is one of your favourite tracks, right? There's probably not any other tra tracks where you can go that hard and that fast, is there, on the World Cup circuit? No, definitely not. Um, yeah, Mount St. Anne is one of my, well, is on the top of my Was. list of favourite tracks. It is, is it? Was. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Still is. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's a sick track, and I think it just, really shows um what downhill is um i mean it's so raw uh, the speed is so high and it's just got i think everything that we want in a downhill track yeah it feels like an outdoor motocross doesn't it really it's like it's yeah pretty, yeah it it's, is you know what i mean it's like you're you're in fifth gear on a on a 250 that's right yeah yeah. Brooke, how does yeah, it let's get back watching, the... it, watching it back? Go on, I bet G. It's, I bet it's wild, isn't it? It's, it must be hard to watch back. What was that, sorry, G? 
How does it feel watching it back, you know, after you're, after injuring yourself on it? Is it is it something that, like, doesn't bother you or you're on top of it? No, it de- definitely doesn't bother me. Um, I mean, something that I try not remind myself of or, or kind of forget about. Um, yeah, I guess it's just, just one of those things that sort of is born into, into us races is that we, you know, kind of uh, – forget about the past and and focus on uh on uh the future and yeah i think it's just just putting it behind me and and uh continuing and focusing on what's ahead yeah i gotta say brooke you know i haven't spoke to you face to face like this but you know to watch you come back from that injury has been an inspiration to coin a phrase but it really has and i know that Probably your focus on getting back to racing is what's got you through all of this, isn't it? I mean, really? I mean, that's 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 where you're at, isn't it? Yeah. For sure. Um, obviously, from day one, I had a goal um, to be back racing. And, um, yeah, it's basically what has gotten me to where I am now. And, um, obviously, just, yeah, wanting to be able to walk again and live a normal life again cool yeah i know that's right and you've well surpassed that and how close are you to getting back to full like race fitness um, well i'm pretty uh pretty happy with where i'm at like i've uh i've been riding my road bike a lot so i've um, been working a lot on my strength and the other day I did uh, did my best one minute power for um, since 2018. So no way. Um, I mean it's a pretty good indication of, of where I'm sitting at. So I'm pretty happy with that. Amazing, bro. Um, obviously, Great to hear, mate. obviously I can get get better and uh, just need to start riding the mountain bike now. Amazing, mate. So everything's firing as it should. Look, this is um, this is Brendan with a great run here. You know, this is. But, uh, these are the parts of the course Claudio, why don't you chip in? You're usually very positive about your riders. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying? So, you know, good opportunity here to big up one of your riders as usual. <laughs> yeah, Brandon is usually not very happy about what I say about him at the races, but uh, um, yeah, that was one of his highlights uh, when he was in my team. And um, he ended up seventh and um, oh, we actually because of that we ended up winning the uh, the team overall or the team ranking on, on the, at this race so that, that race was actually a highlight for us and uh, definitely Brendan's seventh place helped for that yeah look at that how tired do you reckon the dog was at the end of this race <laughs> what how tired do you reckon the dog was at the end of this race <laughs> well, he's like he's doesn't it? Now, you know that just as well as me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, it's Rat Boy. Let's have a look at this one. Santa Cruz Syndicate. So, at this, his best, go on, Cunning. Yeah, I was going to say the same as you were going to say. His best result here in 2011. Are you looking place. at my notes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just cheating. That was Robert, fast into that first turn so, then. Yeah, just Bryson knows, loves yeah. this track as well. Was this Two the, the was this the year before? This year. He won the overall. Did he win? Did he win the overall in 14? If you notice now, can you see the rain on the lens? It's started. The rain starts to come down. Yeah. I think it's pretty bad at the top already, actually. It's mad how quick it rolls in at Monster Hand. Like, you can be at the top in the pouring rain, and, and the, I remember the boys at radio and say it's not raining at the bottom, you know? It'd be that smaller difference. Yeah, it, yeah, it rolls in off that river or off the, off, I don't know. It, it, yeah, it comes in hard, doesn't it? It's so humid, yeah. though, isn't it? But then it, it, it goes the other way. You know, sometimes you ride in a wet, wet day and then the next day's dusty again. You know, it will switch so quickly. The conditions just change hour to hour here, don't it? Yeah, yeah. And in the women's race, Miriam yeah. said that those rocks are quite grippy in the dry. I, I don't know, but I never found them particularly grippy in the dry. And his wheels just collapsed there, look. Oh, it's gone. He's tackled it. That's how hard it is on the kit there, though. Wrong, A rock on the wrong, you know, just a big impact. That can happen so easily. 
The tough thing with all the rocks in Mont Saint is that they're in the ground, you know, they're not really loose just rolling around, they're, they're set in the ground, so, you know, you hit a rock and it's, it just, it's not going to move, you know, it's going to go through your tyre, it's going to go through your wheel, so it's going to stop you. Cool, look at it wobbling. Oh. Bro, what time is it there for you? Um, just got, just about six o'clock in the morning. The latest oh, night man. you've had in a while then, mate, isn't it? Stay the chain, stay there. So, <laughs> the latest night? Or morning? Yeah. It's early. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's early. <laughs> Brendan's got a sweat on. Brendan Van Club in second and Needles there. You look pretty serious there, Jake. He's Do you, don't I? Look a bit angry. Brendan's just been revived and put on the podium there at that point. Yeah. Look at the rain. Oh, look at the rain. Yeah, there it is. I'd hate to win a World Cup because it rained. It'd be a terrible thing to happen. I mean, how would you live with that? That was bad. We paused for that bit. I think, I think this year, like, it started raining real bad and then it, it stopped for, like, the top three or top five. I'm not sure, but... Yeah, yeah you're right. I remember something like that. Final yeah. And he said, you know, it's just been like sort of bad luck, mechanical. And it's not raining down here, really. Been going wrong for him. He's yeah. definitely got the pace to step it up. Strange, isn't it? Kind of these guys, Cunny, you know? I remember racing on Saint Anne some years, and it's done similar. You know, you, and you ride in the top bit in the wet, and you've got to almost, you have to almost gauge when the the rain stops. You know, because suddenly you find yourself on like a dusty, dry bit of track, and it, it changes. You know, in a hundred meters, and as soon as you reach that dry spot, yeah. you have to start cracking on again. And also, it takes quite a while until it gets slippery in the woods, right? Because the the rain doesn't really enter the woods until it really pours down hard. Yeah, yeah very true. But I reckon this track's pretty good in the wet. Like these rocks are not. I don't think they're too slippery at all. Don't you as well? No. Really? No. Nah. <laughs> That's not what I felt. <laughs> no, but I said to the, I said to Emmeline and, and Nick and Miriam, maybe it's because the tires we were using back then were so bad. Like they weren't, they weren't the soft compound to deal with them. You know what I mean? They were like plastic, weren't they? Yeah, well, maybe the nineties, but in, in, in the two thousands, our tires were pretty good already. I'd say. Uh, all right. <laughs> not convinced, Warner, not convinced. <laughs> not for flats, though. I mean, we were, we were all still riding tubes and uh, not tubeless. So I guess we had a lot more flat tires than nowadays. Yeah. And look, no umbrellas down the bottom at all yet. It's, it's really yeah, funny, though. Right <clears throat> but as you said, Mont Saint Anne, I would argue the rocks, you know, I, I wouldn't have said the rocks are as quick as in the try, though, are they? In the wet, but the rest of the track, if you get it right, it's quite sandy and you can find some grip there. It's, you know what I mean? There is a bit, it's not clay, is it? It's like uh, there is some grip there. Would you agree, Brooke? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think, you get, I think you get grip, but I think what happens is that the track gets so rough. You know, you get deep ruts, you get deep holes, and all the all the turns that are kind of made from this kind of quite a fine, silty dirt. And once it gets wet, and a few riders go through it, the holes get deeper and deeper, and mm, you start yeah. just blowing into them. Definitely, without a doubt, a man on the up. That is first. Top 20 in a World Cup here a year ago. I think Marcelo actually having a sabbatical this year, taking a year out. He certainly chose the right one to have off. He hadn't missed a thing yet. Yeah, he did. Oh, is that right? Is that what he was doing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was just going to ask you, how hard is it on that high speed left? How high and hard is it to take the inside there, G? It's uh, it's fast, you know. It's it's hard to gauge. You're coming into it, and it's quite wide open, and and you know you don't necessarily know how fast you're going until you have a slight slide or you dab a foot or something pings you, and and you know that suddenly you suddenly realise just how fast you are going on those open sections. So to just dive in and and grab an inside line on some of it, it's it it is pretty hard. Is it? Yeah. Affected the course too much just yet. And is it hard, you know, this is probably, even though it's not particularly slow, 
one of the slowest parts of the track and you come right into this rock section off one of the fastest parts of the track. Is that difficult? Let's ask you that first, Brooke. You know, the contrast in speed. Yeah, it is because by, by that time you're pretty fatigued and also um, I think like it's pretty hard to find the, the right gear to come off of that rock roll and pedal to carry speed for the, for the next section because it kind of feels like you come out of there with minimal speed because it's quite a it's, it's a slight uphill. Um, yeah. Also, there's like a lot of rocks around, so like trying to pedal and carry speed is pretty hard. What I like about Mountain End though is that even though it's technical and rough, it's it's still flowy. It still feels like a downhill. It doesn't go towards like where you feel like are you're uh, doing trials. There, yeah, definitely not. I feel like the average speed would be pretty good down this track. It's quite cool the way it, uh, the way it changes as well. You know, you walk the track and then the first practice runs aren't too bad. They're pretty smooth. And then, you know, later in practice, it's rough. There's holes coming through. You know, the lines are changing. The rocks are kind of coming more exposed. And all weekend, the track's just changing and getting rougher and rougher the whole time you're riding it. Yeah, it's good. It's a real track. Yeah, it is a real track, isn't it? That's exactly what it is. Well, you can see how quickly go, things go wrong. Let's hope that wasn't so good still the rain not anywhere really yeah, down this track. Jim, you, I'm yeah. right in thinking you, 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 you've won so many of the venues around the world, but you never mastered this one, did you? Montanan, you never won it. You second a lot of times, right? Yeah, no, I don't think I have won it. I think um, I think I've had a few seconds and a, a few podiums. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think um, I think some of my better results have come after after big crashes as well. Strangely, you know, the years that I've had massive ones in practice have, have been the years I've had quite good results in the race somehow. Could you put that down maybe to the, maybe you feel like the pressure's off you a little bit come a race run because it's it's quite an occasion in it the Mont Saint Anne downhill. Could be, could just be a bit of concussion just there taking the nerves away, you know. So I'm not quite on, on edge as much. <laughs> <laughs> I've had some good ones. That shit section they just showed where you kind of go down the steep rock roll out of the rocks. I slid off the top and, and landed at the bottom so hard I snapped my stem off. But, oh my what? god. And do you remember that we talked about the, the 55k on your head? But mm. further up before that mad high speed section out of that first wood, it used to have a left sort of a big bus stop up into the trees. One time you just uh, went straight to them trees at about 45 mile an hour. I don't even know how you didn't, I don't know how you didn't shout a man. I don't know how you walked out of there. Didn't it was you your unbelievable. Open, G? Yeah, that's yeah, right. I did, Brooke, <laughs> straight into my. Straight... <laughs> I remember coming down that section and it was such a fast bit and I kind of hit the turn and it stood me up and I just shot into the trees like you're saying. Cool. I was off the back of the bike trying to slow down and as I the bike hit a tree and so I slammed forward and I snapped the carbon rails off on the seat just like my nuts hitting it so hard. I was in agony. I can imagine. <laughs> I remember limping out the woods and having to whip my shorts down to check on things. Yeah, I've done that. It's not a nice thing, is it, that? Here's the big man. Here we go, Brooke Dog, look. Oh, it's raining now. It's now, isn't it? Yeah, now it really comes in, doesn't it? So you need 10 riders You don't seem too bothered there, right? Yeah, you can. Absolutely right, Cunny. Yeah, so the same corner causing a little bit of trouble for Brooke there. And to get his yeah, Brooke, you're another one that's just like riding it as you had planned. It's like the rain has rolled in, but it's not affected the way you're charging at it. It looks like you're just riding it as if it's, you know, game on. Yeah, I mean, like, I've had, I've had races here where I've ridden it in the rain and I've felt like, you know, the, the runners felt really good and then you get to the top, uh, to the bottom and the time isn't good. It's just like, it's so hard to gauge how to ride a track in the rain um, when I guess you haven't ridden something, um, you know, say all week um, it's been dry and then it comes to race day and it just starts pissing down. It's kind of, kind of hard to gauge how, um, how to actually uh, ride, a, ride a track in this, these conditions. Oh, it's kind of like, you hit that turn there. That's a wild one. Yeah, you're <laughs> <laughs>
But Brooke, even on that big long straight out in the open there with that rain now really clearly coming down. I mean, you can see yeah. the bike just just skidding around. It's wild, isn't it? It is. And like so like choosing the tires as well is pretty um Yeah. It's pretty hard when you're like, you know, you're left at the top with like, what do I do? Do I stay on the same tires I've been on all week or change? Um, so yeah, there's a lot of stress. And everyone's looking around, don't they? Everyone's, everyone's looking at the others change to spikes and like some boys are, yeah. some boys aren't. You never know what's the way to go. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Do you often use spikes here on this track? Nah, not, not, not really. It's a track that you can actually ride drives in. I would just... Yeah, yeah, that's coming down now. Do you remember that rain coming down, Brooke? Yeah, I remember this. Yeah, I remember this race pretty vividly. It was, um, it was pretty horrible because it just, yeah, it, it comes down so quick at Mount Saint Anne and it just rolls in real fast and you. I guess it's kind of hard to um, put in put into your head that you know there's a there's now it's raining. You've ridden the track in the dry for the for the week, so it's um, yeah, it's it's adapting, and um, I guess some people adapt really well, and um, as we'll see see later on, um, Stevie does yeah. does a good job there, and um, yeah, I guess it's yeah. It's all about adapting and uh, mentally changing your mindset. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, it is, isn't it? It is a big head game, isn't it, G? When, yeah. When it rains like that as well, it's a massive... You can see it as a massive opportunity, really, can't you, to go out and do something special. You know what I mean? Like, people are going to make mistakes. There's a big opportunity to be seized. How do you approach a, a race when it changes the conditions like that, G, in the middle of, in the middle of a final? You know what I think um, is really interesting when when the rain rolls in. You know you've you've had the whole weekend of a dry race. You've had the whole kind of practice sessions in the dry, and you know when the rain rolls in, you you really notice the atmosphere at the top of the at the top of the hill change. You know it goes from quite a, a kind of a tense atmosphere, everyone being quite serious and focused, and once that rain rolls in, it almost you know it it almost takes the pressure off a lot of the riders, and I think you know. You, you see a lot of the boys kind of lighten up a bit. It, it, they kind of, I don't know if it just kind of makes yeah. it, it, it takes Pressure's a little off. bit of the stress out of it. And, and, and you see some lads, they really rise to that, you know, it, they really kind of respond well to that. And, and you see them kind of relax a little bit and, and, and often, you know, put in the runs of their lives, which is, you know, it's quite interesting to see how that happens. Yeah. I, you know, that's right. In a bit of dry race, you can't really make a mistake, but when it, when it's, Put on its head like that. It's right. You can probably make a mistake. Claudio, did you uh, did you ever get lucky with the rain? Have a good result at a World Cup because of um, you know finals? No, I had the opposite. I had the opposite. Of course you did. Of course I, you I, did. I had Don't a tell me you were going to win. And then the sun came out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hey Brooke, I, I noticed there. Were you still on flat pedals there? Yeah. Yeah, I think what made you change? My last year on flat pedals. Okay, and what what made you decide to change? Um, probably thought I could go faster, <laughs> be a bit more, but be a bit more. Um, well, I guess just not have to worry about my feet bouncing around. Did you win? Did you win Valdez in two thousand and twelve on flat pedals? You did, didn't you? Yeah. You know, all the best riders <laughs> in the world have won World, De world Cups on flat pedals, isn't they? That's unarguable, I think. Yeah. Don't you, Brooke? Hey, G, what do you reckon? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think so. That was, your, that was Brooke's <laughs> first World Cup win, I think, because I, I remember I was um, I was second place to him then. I remember watching that. Yeah. Did you go second then? Did you? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think Brooke just yeah. bit me. First World Cup win. Yeah, it was Good just... I'm hoping to get the public day, to vote yeah. that one in, actually, because, you know, this we, we picked this actual race because it coincides with Stevie and everything. But, like, normally these, these World Cup classes are voted by the fans, and wouldn't it be great to see Valdez Air from 2012? I'd like to see it, because that was... It, I remember it. I remember leaving the commentary booth afterwards being exhausted. It was just a mad race with loads of big crashes and stuff, wasn't it? I don't know yeah. if your, uh, I don't know if your commentary too. from back in the day would be allowed to be shown these days from then, would it, <laughs> 
<laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> they might have to censor it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So we've got a question here from Bobo Christophilus. I think he's a Roman. Are the tracks more <laughs> difficult nowadays or is it the same? Are, and are conditions on the rider stronger? I guess he means are you in better shape these days? I think the tracks Brooke. are... Um... Sorry, G. Oh, go on. My bad. No, go, Brooke. It's the delay. You go. You go, G. Go. Um, I would say I would say the tracks aren't necessarily harder. You know, I think we had more technical tracks back in the day, but I think the riders are pushing harder now. You know, they're going faster. They, they're, they're putting that much more into it. So, you know, the riders almost make the tracks harder. Um, and, the, you know, the conditions and, and the riders kind of, as the tracks get faster, the riders push harder. So, you know, if it's if it's if one goes, then the rider makes it makes it more technical in a way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would say that actually our equipment was that bad. <laughs> it was quite. It made it. You know, tracks that were super technical back when me and Claudio were racing with your bikes. Well, they're easier, but you're going twice as fast. I, I think Brooke, you probably demonstrate that every time you get on a bike, you don't hang about. You're always pushing, mate. Always pushing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I think uh, the tracks nowadays are probably um, a, loss li- a lot less technical, um, a lot faster for the likes of uh, like Leo Gang. Um, that track's pretty quick nowadays compared to yeah. probably back in the day. Um, and I think it makes for good racing for sure. Uh, but, I mean, technical yeah. is always always good because then it separates separates the riders too so yeah and i think That's also right. riders uh riders have definitely got stronger well you know every year people well everyone steps it up and um yeah i guess the fitness on races nowadays compared to probably i don't know 10 years ago i know when i was racing 10 years ago i just started i didn't even know what training was so didn't you? Even as recent um, yeah. as that, you've had to step it up a lot over the last decade, Denbrook, have you? Oh, big time. I mean, I think probably 2013 was the the first year that I really had to put my head down and, and yeah, work my ass off and train. Like 2012, 11 and 10, I didn't, uh, didn't do anything. I just rode my bike, you know, and um, I thought that was, that was training, so... <laughs> yeah, nowadays it was. it's uh, <laughs> nowadays it's a full time job. Is there a World Cup track that you would like to see, you know, come back? One that's not on the circuit anymore. Let's ask Claudio that one because uh, he's got a good memory for old tracks. Well, what do you guess? Obviously, Champery. I would never go for me in Italy. <laughs> but... Yeah, never go. Definitely that too. Yes, hundred percent. That was awesome. Sure. That was actually my first, my first race, my first World Cup. Um, but definitely, Champery should be back on it as well. Yeah, you're dead yeah, right, G. So one you, well, which, bro, you tell me, which one are you missing, Brooke? Um, yeah, Champery was sick. But I'd love, I'd love to see like some old school tracks like Caprun. Um, yeah. Where was that one in Italy that Fabian Burrell won it? Oh, uh, in um, Champs, I think. Lavinia, Lavinia. yeah, in that principal. Yeah, Lavinia, yeah. Yeah, yeah that track looks so sick. Yeah, that was a good yeah, that one. Was so there. much fun. Yeah, that was yeah. super cool. G, which um, one would you like back, G? I think I miss those kind of quite natural, steep European tracks, you know, like Champery, like, um, you know, Schladming. Um, you know where you where you turn up and and you're walking the course and it and it looks like the course builders have just like rolled the tape down through the woods, you know, and it's it's loamy, yeah. it's rooty, it's natural and Schladming. you know the course is yeah schladming and it, it, it you know it's steep and gnarly and it, if it's wet, you know you've got guys struggling to get through sections and you know they're the they're the kind of the tracks I think that were my favourite really. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right, we're going to crack on in a minute. We're going to have a short break. Claudia, we're going to say goodbye to you now. Thank you very much for joining us. Cheers, Thank you, too. Cheers. Have fun. Thanks a lot, mate. So, uh, Brooke, 
and G, I know you two are going to hang around. We've got Sam Blankensop joining us after this short break. We'll be back with the top 10. See you in a few moments. My name's Rob Warner. I'm taking the best young athletes on a quest to ride the world's greatest trails and meet the people who live in some of the wildest places on Earth. Never had myself down as an Attenborough type. Yes. Ah, get off! <laughs> <laughs> the first sight of the Himalayas. You know, lions take the weakest and slowest rider. Oh, my word! Rob Warner's Wild Rides, now available on Red Bull TV. Anywhere around here you can get a cappuccino. Ready for a ride in style? A free ride mountain bike film combining progressive riding with cutting edge filmmaking. Once you start something, you gotta go all the way in. There's such a satisfying feeling. It's really hard to explain. A film oozing with the effortless style of some of the most talented riders of the coastal crew. Motive, now available on Red Bull TV. Hello, Sam Blankensop. How are you, mate? Hey, how's it? Yeah, good, man. Good, man. You just wake up, bro? You... <laughs> no, I've been up way... I've been, I've been here for the whole show, mate. Yes, Blanky. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you must have been up at 4 o'clock, bro. Yeah, 4.30. Well, I've been up since 3 with, um, with, the, with the wee one. Oh, my so, God. <sighs> so this, I've been up for hours, mate. It's normal. I thought you'd been up and out fishing by now, Sam, eh? You had any good fishing lately? Yeah, well, normally this is the only time I get up this early is to go fishing, but uh, I'm here watching some mountain biking, so it's, uh, it's a change for me. But we can't go fishing at the moment. We Have can, you enjoyed uh, it so you can far, go mate? fishing off the rocks. Oh, you're not allowed out on the boat at the moment? Nah. So a bit oh, gutted. No it's way. been mean weather, and I've just been itching to get out fishing, but... Um, yeah, I did the other day. I went for a spearfish. Wasn't supposed to, but uh, I was the authorities anyway. it was are now good. on their way to your house, no doubt. <laughs> so if you disappear quickly, there, Sam. <laughs> bad boy. Nah, uh, there was people out there the day before, so I thought, why not? I'll get in there. <laughs> <laughs> got it with a spear. Got to feed the family. You have, you have. That's right. That's right. What? Well, what? What are your memories of this race, Sam? Do you remember we're going to see the top 10 now? Do you remember Stevie coming down at the end of this one? Not really, man. It's a lot so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, how was it for you sitting there waiting to watch this lot come down now that we're about to appear? It was pretty tense, you know. I think when you're in the hot seat, you know, it's you're pretty nervous for every single rider and you know, I could see the, the the conditions changing, and I had word that it was raining on the top section. So, you know, I was I was I was thinking, you know, I might be safe, but at the same time, I knew that the caliber of riders that were still to come, and you know, I knew that there was there was quite a high chance that those boys could could pull something out of the bag. And I think Montserrat especially is one of those tracks where if you just charge at it and if you just throw yourself at it. And it works, you know. You can you can put in a, a pretty impressive run, and you know Stevie showed that when you just go at it and, and just take no prisoners, then you can do it. Absolutely. Well, let's get into that top ten then. Let's have a look. Oh, look at it. Oh, oh look at the weather now. Like the now that that is that proper way. rain, isn't it? What a That's really nice. Anyway, it is proper rain. When Sam Poor old Nico here. Yeah. Hey. He hasn't got much chance, eh, with that. I mean, like visibility that. must be a big factor as well, isn't it? Back into form. So, yeah, he's yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah. Everything, you know, Sorry, your gloves Bruce. are gone, Bruce. your gloves are wet, you're, you're literally Bruce. just like, it's, it's a write-off, isn't it? It's, it's game over almost. Brooks, sorry, as well, at the top, I mean, what's it like when you see that and you're sat in that, in that start hut looking out into that lot? It's literally like, just, I don't know, it's so hard to compromise because it's, um, yeah, you obviously roll down that start 
and you just straight into it. So it's like you got to find a spot where you can pull your roll offs or tear offs, and um, yeah, I guess like probably back yeah back in back back then we didn't even really have mud guards to to stop everything coming up. So um, yeah, it was just pretty much coming straight into your face. Still doing really well 65 the kilometers an hour in the rain, though, which says how fast this track is, Sam. Whoa, is this one of your man. favorite? That was good, wasn't it? Is this one of your favorite tracks, yeah. Sam, or do you uh, like or loathe this place? Oh, I love Monsonano. It's, it's the first ever World Cup I raced when I was a junior. <laughs> I just always love going there. It's just. Because it's kind of weird. Area, it's like you, will not give up the dream of winning you know, it's the one that I always enjoy going to. Cause it's just <laughs> gnarly, <laughs> just full <laughs> pins, <laughs> and they and they change it up most years, so it's yeah, kind of awesome. It so it's just like raw rocks, and and, and it gets a good weather, you know, it rains and. <laughs> Dusty gets all conditions, so it's kind of a cool place. Yeah. I love it. You know, it was my first time I'd ever gone abroad. I think. Well, fit when I went. To, first time I ever gone to North America. Anyway, when I went there for, my first, for a World Cup in '94. Yeah, blew my mind. Oh, oh, that's not a good place to crash. Jesus. Yeah, man down. I think it looks like a George Brennigan run. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, do you remember that one where he banged his head in Wyndham? Oh my goodness. Oh, he went down Wyndham, five times, it? didn't oh, he? That's probably, more than that's probably that. the best run to date these days. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, what can you do? There is it's poor old Georgie B. Look at how loose he was. Oh, here. Oh. That was close. It shows you how you're feeling when you get to that section. You're absolutely written off. Disasters for Nico, really. Oh my! Oh, well, yeah, exactly. It shows you right there. So difficult, and you know, coming out of there onto. Yeah, so check this out because this is. I'd say that Troy now shows us that it can be done. Done yet? And uh, having a fantastic season. Podium into the last two races, two fifth spots for him. How consistent is this guy? Yeah, He's inside, isn't he? And looking good up here at the top section. Oh, no, it's, a, it's amazing what he can uh, ever, do this guy. Ever finishes out well, the top so. three. It's insane. Well, it's like, know. You might yeah. see something very, very special here this afternoon. Let's keep our fingers crossed that we will. You just don't know, but it's certainly going to be slicker for the remaining riders. It will not dry out. But you, you the saw the that rain come down. Actually. Then. I mean, riders, riders that course is Brosnan's watching Brosnan ride. It doesn't look like it's been Bobby affected, but that's a that's a lot different to when the rain came before the rain came down, isn't it, the outside, Sam? Railing those berms and oh yeah. Good sense of this like, difficult conditions If you here. see G, so just G could have like just cruised down. Now it's just like it's just so different, and to change like your mindset in that. For me, when it starts to rain, I kind of relax. Like I think G was saying before, you're just like, oh well, it's gonna be. It's more fun, I guess. <laughs> but it's just, you just don't know what's going to happen because it could be slippery or it couldn't be. So it's just like adapting. Yeah. I guess this race is kind of like. Um... Sorry, go, G. I was going to say, I think that's the hardest thing, like Sam was saying, you know, when it's when it's just rain because you can't predict, you know, the sections that you knew before were grippy, now you've no idea. And, you know, it's hard to predict how hard to push on a section and whether to back off or whether to attack it. Yeah. Oh, oh. I reckon um, you, could, like there, yeah. you could relate this race to um, to that year Gwyn, right, Gwyn won. So he's coming down the line. It's a valiant effort from Troy Brosnan. What a it's run decent. from him. 3.99. Yeah. Here's a question for you, Brook, to start with. How can riders make so much time from that last split to the finish line? Because we see it all the time, and it doesn't... I mean, I know it's, it's a big rock section, and there's only a couple of turns, though, but people, the times do change there. Why? Um... I guess it's the carrying the carrying speed because it's it's so important to um, be able to maintain speed through all this 
This, you're meaning this section now or the or the one after this? No, from the very last wood down, and then you come out onto that flat pedal, and then there's a split, and then it's like the slight oh, left yeah. in the rock section and the bridge. I mean, it's such a short piece of track, but time is it, made it and is, lost yeah, it. But yeah, I think it's um, yeah, I think it's it's about carrying speed and and maintaining speed because that's I I think it's super important to um. Yeah, be able to hold and carry speed all through there. And I guess that, you know, that carrying that speed starts actually in that wood, getting that wood right yeah. the last steep bit yeah. before you come Definitely. out there. Here's Bruni. This is a hell of a run, this is. <laughs> as I remember it. Winning the junior round, uh, junior category earlier on today. World champion on this course. Taking the women's, so... End of last year. He's got to keep it up for Team Lapierre today, hasn't he? Yeah, he had a fourth in Val de Sol this year. His best ever World Cup result. In Andorra, he was eight as well, so let's have a look what he can do now. Can he make any sense? Can he keep his head? Well, yes, he can. Flying down there, fast off that drop. And thankfully, those turns burned up so much that uh, probably the wet conditions are not going to affect those turns too much. And holding a wide line out there, even some clip the pole at the side of the track. Like it, only 19, really looking good. Only two seconds, two seconds back. back he's he's just a boy here, eight. look at that. Eh? that he's done a lot since now. this race. This yeah, he's done a lot, this guy. That, that was insane Whoa. around that turn oh, then. Sick. Oh, oh. where's he off to? Oh. French lines. lines. French, classic French. <laughs> the French lines. Rolling a crash there. Put the front hard into something there and it sent him off. Well... I think one of the hardest things about this track is is how fast it is and then you've got the technical wood sections and then you go straight back into the open and the speed you have to carry through the woods is the speed you like exiting the fast bit on. So I think that's why you're seeing boys going so hard on the technical sections because they know they have to carry that speed out there. Yeah, and this is a critical bit, right, to get out of this wood. And can you carry that speed all the way down? It's less than five seconds off. I mean, that's pretty impressive with that ride. Look at the bike slip, slip sliding around. Yeah, I think that's what, that's what makes it hard because the woods are normally dry from the rain, but then you're coming so fast out into the open open sections and then that's where you're seeing everyone slipping out because you're just like out of control and you're also out of control coming into the dry sections so it's that's where you see that was a good run from Bruni what, what do you think it is that you know made Bruni go on from like this part of his career to being now already three-time world champion I mean he's incredible isn't he Sam you, you came up and Brooke, you, you both came up through the ranks with him Sam ask you you tell me about him first yeah well I was on the team with him so I knew pretty yeah. much straight away like watching him as a junior that he was going to be one of the best riders because he was like I was he was teaching me things and I'd already been racing for years before that and he was teaching me like just things like his, his first year racing you know he just was so smart as a racer and do you think like just yeah I mean he's he's such so strong mentally isn't he do you think that's um it's got to be a massive factor in why he's just so good at winning the big races. Brooke, Brooke what do you think? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, I think he's, I think he really found his form last year, like just being so consistent throughout a whole year where I think bef previous he struggled to that, struggled with that. But it's, it's unreal how on the day at world championships, he just, he just it takes it, I don't know, he just steps it up and it's it's like it's a whole whole other race in his head and he just, yeah, I don't know what he does, but um, he seems to know how to how to win a world championship and he's, uh, yeah, shown that in the last four years. Yeah, he's won three of the last four. Gee, you've been world champ as well. Yeah. I mean. To, to, to win it, it's like the biggest prize there is in downhill. How has he done it? What, what is it that makes Bruni so good? I think he's a, an intelligent rider. You know, I think he's, I think he's, um, I think he's a smart lad, and you know, he's, he's very critical of of all the different areas. You know, he's he's good at 
he's good at breaking down all the, the separate kind of parts that make you into a, a good racer and, and, you know, saying, right, how can I get this area better? How can I get this area better? You know, whether it's whether it's the lines he's riding, the, 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 the setup of the bike, you know, his training. I think he's, I think he's very good at just being quite critical of each area and really, you know, finding those small differences that give you that kind of small percentage that amount to, you know, making you into the, the standard rider that he is. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 impressive to watch. And it, I mean, to keep his head last year against Pierron, that was quite something, wasn't it? Yeah, he's a cool customer and he's, you know, he's, he's, he's a good racer. You know, he's got a good head on him. He's, he, he doesn't get stressed. He doesn't get phased. You know, he's, he's relaxed. Well, we've got six riders left at the top. The next man we're going to see is, uh, is going to be Sam Hill. So that's going to be something to, to look forward to. Bro, I don't know what you're going to do now. We're going to say goodbye to you, actually, and bring in Finn Isles. I, I don't know. You're going to go back to bed now? What's the deal for the day? Um, you, you're coming I'm back on here, apparently, wait, wait. actually. We're having you back at the end, I think. So that's either you got, you can't go yeah. to sleep. No, I won't be going back to sleep. My day started. <laughs> good man, good man. All right, bro. Well, we'll see you in a bit. And uh, any minute now. Yeah, see you, see you boys. Finn. See you in a bit, mate. Finn's going to appear any second. Well, let's watch this then, Sam Hill. The most successful rider ever, actually. Here in uh, in Monson and with Steve Pete, they both got four wins. Pete, four World Cup wins. This man, three World Cup wins and a World Championship title on this track. People's champion, the guy is getting back to the form of his life. Injuries slowed him down the past few years, but and Finn Isles joins us. Hello, how are you guys? We saw something big from him, and it's definitely not through a lack of. Yo, what's up, Finn? Good man. I don't know how you do this every week, Rob. I'm I'm nervous. My heart's pounding. Hey, don't start stressing yet. Start stressing when we talk about the next Canadian World Cup winner. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to watch Sam Hill ride again, isn't it? Look at him. Yeah, I was just singing that. It's sick to see him back on a, on a World Cup, isn't it? Cool to watch. One. And look how close he is. I mean, is this track drying out massively now or not? Yeah, it looks like it is a bit, eh? I think so. I think, there's, I think there's I think there's areas of it that are dry out massively, but there'll still be those pockets that are just damp, wet, slippery, and, and they're the little sniper sections that you know you won't you won't realise they're wet until you're in them and it's too late. They're the sections that will trip you up, and you know those little kind of oh. pocket sections like that. It uh it kind of looks like Nico had the the worst of the rain there. Um, no, he, yeah. It, yeah, that was that was torrential, eh? He had it yeah. bad. I mean, he, he wouldn't even be able to see where he's going. But what's interesting is it's Sam, you know, just 2.4 back there. Finn, you, you won here as a junior, didn't you? And you had seventh at the World Championships last year. What, what does Mont saint -Anne mean to you? It's the only Canadian World Cup, and it probably is going to be for a long time to come. Yeah, Mont saint -Anne's pretty special because... Me being a Canadian and this race being such a legendary track and being in Canada, uh, it means a lot every year. So I think coming here is uh, definitely a special thing for me, but it's also one of my favorite tracks just because it's so uh, it's so um, fast and long and rough and basically, basically the hardest track on the circuit in my eyes. Um, and that's what makes it so fun and so special every year. Yeah, it is. It is. It's like the ultimate racetrack in a lot of ways, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And you can see here, compared to now, there's a lot more dirt filled in in the rock gardens and even in like some of these open sections. The, the, uh, they just look a little bit better. Did I? It's got rougher uh, better shape. I mean, it's been a long time since even some bits of this track, you know, they haven't been changed for a while now. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say, I don't know if I'd say rougher, but definitely a little bit more, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it just makes it faster because there's a, uh, you're just carrying a lot more speed and it's more bedrock, so you're, you're, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I didn't ride it back then, so it's hard to say, but just from my, from my yeah, eyes sure, here, I can, that's true, I that's true. That. Yeah. Here's the big GM, Greg Minar. 
and he'll be drawing on all seven times second and one win as he deals with wow. the psychological battle of knowing the course mm. probably going to be a little slicker than he's seen it all week since the first day of practice and he'll be wanting to step it up this season he must be a little bit disappointed so far he's Sam on a day like this when you've been riding all week on on, um, on, on I imagine dry tires it must be a difficult really decision to switch at the top for one really run isn't it for him, so he's going to want to power in yeah I think for this one we did you know, obviously we did change but most of the time yeah you like you don't want to change but you do because like the rocks and stuff are not as good with the spikes but no it's kind of this I think this these years like now it's different because it's more rock but and more packed in but these you could see like there was more dirt around so it was almost this really is a better to have spikes, the but then the the come into these sections, you're just like sketchy ears, but it's all good. Small parts. It's crazy it's to watch the, the, uh, the uh, oh. Go ahead, Jim, mate. Sorry, dude. Uh, yeah, no, I was just saying it. Um, it looks crazy on the 26-inch wheels. I feel like now it looks yeah. not smoother, but it just looks like the riders are doing less. Everyone just kind of sitting there, just like letting the letting the bumps to you come to you. And like you can see here, every rider, it looks like they're just working so hard on the bike and moving around so much. Like there's definitely a lot more of a sketch factor on the old 26-inch wheels. Yeah, the, yeah, you can see the difference in the turns and like th they've like sunk into turns and like been kicked around in the morning. Oh, oh it's Daisy. It's only one point two off. Quick. For, for that, that, uh, the look yeah, back. Well, champion from Lear Gang there. Look. Oh, is that from Lear Gang? Yeah, 12 was Lear Gang, wasn't it? Well, yeah. It's just so amazing. Everything's turned up. Minar's so nice to watch, man, isn't he? Look at him. Look at the style of him. And the guys. Just range, isn't he? You see him for like the, how tall he is through these rocks. It helps him so much just soaking it all up with his legs. It's not impossible. He was nearly 40, yeah. That's what's insane. And we can see the rainbow stripes on Greg there. That's got to be on his mind after this weekend. He'll be wanting to uh, go into his home. Yeah, you can see Greg. He looks like he's just so big, so big on that bike. It's hard to hard to imagine i don't know him riding that fast on a bike that looks that small i feel like it'd be any one of us riding a small at this point it's still raining that's started again since the last one isn't it yeah that's right Absolutely. and gwyn had actually won the two many times. years before this coming into this race he'd won here in 11 and 12. i think was this gwyn's first year on uh on specialized after after leaving trek just how much I couldn't tell you that there. off the top of my head. World Cup in 08. Could be. And then he uh, got his first. Uh, he got finished 10th. It's there. sunny there now. In 09, he had his first mm. podium here. Yeah, it's and strange, then in 2011, eh? 2012, this section here is uh, so sick. I kind of wish that the. Uh, you can almost. I mean, the, the new Stevie Smith Rock is pretty special, but that section just looks so flat out and like moto style. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that fly off. Yeah, it used to be so good when the. Pretty iconic, I think. It's like yeah, classic absolutely. The Hepe was so good. Yeah, and you're right, Finn. This is like his first year on special. It definitely looks like it's drying out through this middle section here. Um, yeah. Even like the rocks there coming in, it looks super dry. Barely touching the ground. Unbelievable. Where's he gonna go here? He's gonna, I think, head over to the right. What's it like going to those rocks, Finn? Full chat. A pretty wild experience, or all right? Yeah, it's 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 pretty scary, especially because there's like the crowd really gathers in there. So you kind of come out of the open section there, and there's not too much noise. And you come to the trees, and it's just people banging on rims, banging on trees, like so loud and so fast and so rough. It's uh, it definitely gets your heart pumping because it's probably the hardest section of the track, and as well, it's the loudest. Um, I don't know. It sort of, I feel like it sort of gives you a bit more energy for the for the rest of the run because you come through there and you're just like, you know, you start really feeling it. So. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's like you can relax kind of after that section. Eh? Well, not relax, but it's like if you get that section good, you know that you've got the momentum for the rest of the track. Absolutely. Kind of that makes it for it. Because you can just like, if you're like a, a few mil off each side, you can kind of just slip out. It just makes it, if you if you make miss that little corner up over that rock, it just, yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, you can definitely lose a lot of time on the exit of that rock garden. So once you get through there, you kind of get that that relief feeling. This season has just been incredible, mm. and this is another brilliant race here. I think coming. Yeah, definitely. This season has thrown everything at these riders. They are really getting a tough time of it. Every course has been so different, and then the changing weather conditions has been different here for the riders as well. Throughout practice, they've just it's gone from wet to dry, and now back to wet. They've had everything to deal with. Rich had dogs through this rock section yep. once. Perfections through Farrah Gwyn down through those trees. Though he looked like no he was right way. bang on the line and carrying great speed. It was like a, the dog. crowd was so close to the track and there was someone holding a dog and as it like jumped so, forward as she came by, she had to like swerve as she clipped the <laughs> Hey, yeah, Sam, this was worth getting up for. Look at this, third qualifier in Montserrat. Sun's come out and we're everything. No excuses, mate. Oh, it's dusty. Yeah, that beautiful conditions. But it's dusty, yeah. Yeah. The real OG Blinky with the rolled up sleeves and no gloves. So sick. Yeah, I think I was stoked that it stopped raining so I didn't have to put the gloves on. <laughs> We've had a social question about the gloves, Blinky. Why no gloves? Um, everyone knows that pretty much. Uh, I just don't like them. <laughs> I, just, I, can't feel, I, can't, I can't feel the bike, you know, under me. And it's just, it's kind of, yeah, it's, and it's, it sucks the rules now, but I guess. Do you have to wear gloves now? Is that a rule now, is it? Well, most of the World Cups, yeah. Dude, so oh, depending um, on the cut, I hate wearing gloves too, mate. Actually, it's like it's like walking on a beach with shoes on, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's no good. Why would you do it? Yeah, well, and it's like kind of having sex with a condom, I guess. The same. <laughs> you said it, Sam. <laughs> Man, I don't know if I, I don't know if I dare. I mean, not not without a condom. I mean, with the with the gloves down once the I, I, I would, I would, I would put the fear into me, you know, riding down this track. You definitely want to hesitate a little bit. Imagine, I don't know, just ripping your hands into some rocks. But I guess it's like it's never happened. So why should you be afraid of it? I guess. Oh man. Yeah, I, like, if I do crash and it's normally you cut your hands, but it's the same, you cut your whole body. I remember this race, I one of my practice runs, I, my frame actually snapped coming into that jump back there. No. The only thing that was holding me from dying was the chain holding it together. No way! So scary. Yeah. Jesus, Blinky. <laughs> And that's a good run, mate, in the 10th place after the ride. Yeah, not bad. Only two more riders now. Danny Hart next, and then the main man himself. I'd say Danny was hoping it had stayed raining. I bet he would have been more comfortable in that uh, pouring <laughs> For sure. Oh, is it this the one, the Danny that misses the jump at the bottom, I think. Is it? Could be. I can't remember. No, it's a good run. He has a good run. Oh, nose dive. Yeah, I think Danny was fourth or fifth. Like he, I think he got on the podium. Oh, yeah. Were you twitching by now, G? Or all, all good? Yeah, probably. I'd had about four Red Bulls, so I must have been buzzing by now. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a sip every there time the Danny camera's R. been on me, I think. Run in Can he repeat it here yeah, today? and I think oh, Danny oh, and Stevie so nice. are both boys that are like, uh, they could both put in, you know, those wild runs it would take to, to win a World Cup. They're both... They're both definitely the, the danger types, you know. Yeah, that's right. But with that rain coming down, I mean, you must have thought maybe it was going to go your way. And, and also, I mean that, especially with respect to the overall battle you were in that year. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. No, I was, I was thinking, yeah, this is looking good, you know, because boys were coming close, but it was still raining. It was, it, it, the track was slower, I think, so, you know. I was, yeah. I was, I had my fingers crossed at this point. 
I feel like Danny, even to this day, is still one of those guys where it's no matter what conditions or no matter what the conditions are, if you're on the hot seat, you can't really feel comfortable with him coming down because he just has that ability to just sort of, it seems like, turn off his brain and just go absolutely insano mode down the course and pull one out. Like, yeah. It's, uh, it's a pretty well, yeah, I mean, he won four in a row. There's only, what, three riders ever done that? I mean, you know, he's special, isn't he? That's wild. For sure, yeah. he's he's hungry for it as well. Like that rain won't have won't have put him off and made him think, you know, I'm, I'm going to back off here. You know, he's one of those boys like you say, Finn. He's going to go for it, absolutely, 100. percent Yeah. Whoa, he landed pretty heavy there. Was that was that gap through there on back then, or was it a bit of a like no, I don't think not so. as much speed coming in through that section? I don't think anyone even. I hadn't heard about it until Minar was first to do it, right? A couple of years ago, wasn't he? Yeah, I thought it was Minar. Yeah. Oh, he had the crowd. Uh, he loosened a few people up there. <laughs> Dental records. Yes, used to be a little bit more on the edge. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit loose there, Rob. Possibly. Hey, look. Next, it's the run, man, and I'm, I'm going to say this: that this is, this is one of the very best race runs you'll ever watch, right? Would you agree with that, lads? I'd say so. Yeah, yeah for sure. That's, that's it. There's some history coming up. I think it, it definitely goes deeper. I mean especially for Canadians than uh, just a race run because this was a, a time where I think Stevie had won one race the year before in, in half year right. and then uh, coming in coming into this one to like win on Canadian soil sort of I would say inspired a, a whole uh, group of Canadians around my age to sort of pursue their dreams to to come out and race World Cups this is cool. I've watched Stevie and I haven't watched Stevie race since since he was racing. And it's Steve Smith yeah. and uh, well, it this definitely looks like the weather. Enjoy this then. I guarantee it, he would love to take his second World Cup win here on home soil in Canada. The crowd already getting revved up at the bottom, awaiting him. So what's he going to do, Cuddy? Yeah. Oh, oh look at Stevie. Man. He's looking quick. He'll want this so bad. As I was saying, he's had a second, a third, and a fourth so far this year. Wanting to step it up, but in such conditions, it looks like he's actually carrying great speed. Yeah. He looks like he's absolutely on fire. Second overall in the points as well. He won't want Athen to get any further ahead. 203 points off G though. But look, pedaling between those turns there as well. Oh, he's firing, so, isn't he? This is classic speed. Left yeah. in the ground for him to make any sense of it. This the split bike will looks tell so us. good, eh? Just Can wrecking, man. Oh, yeah. point wow. two back. Well, this is unbelievable from Steve Smith. What an effort as he enters the part of the course now, though. Everyone seems to have lost a bit of time between those two splits, but maybe not smooth. Steve Smith. Man, he's carrying unbelievable speed into this wood section. Did you see how he drifted around that left-hand corner out of the open? He is there? all out, isn't he? as if he's on, oh, he's got oh, this as well. I get that. Yeah, I think he's the only one to do that. Incredible yeah, run. So. This is unbelievable riding oh. from Smith. This is what? One, this is what desire is. You're seeing it right now in front of you. Stevie Smith now on that Da Vinci. Absolutely on fire here. Can he take back point two of a second and take the win here in Montserrat? When we thought maybe the game was over, Stevie Smith just looked at it and rubbing his hands and just wanting more and more from this course. It's so he's incredible. only 0.018 back. He's within touch. <laughs> What's he going to do now from mm, there on down? That's tight, isn't it? He can't hang about. It's got to be all out from Smith. Oh, if only he knew how close he was to taking the win here this afternoon. Well, the, the crowd will lift him. Smith. Yeah, look at the noise. Wow. For maybe taking the win here. What's he going to do? He's pedaling it out. Oh, look at <laughs> the time. Smith does it by nearly a second. And I haven't shared that hard for nearly three years. That was an incredible... <laughs> look how pumped he is. He's done the impossible, can he? That goosebumps in my heart is just That's racing. Yeah. Jesus. That yes, absolutely so amazing. That's run. unreal, isn't it? We saw a lot of the other top guns getting... Just getting pushed that to one dude side by the weather. And Stevie Smith just stepped up to the plate then, didn't he? Breathtaking. Absolutely. Would you remember from this day, Finn, do you remember being stood there and watching Stevie come down and take that win? 
I wasn't actually there. I watched it at home with my dad. But, oh, uh, did you? You weren't there. Was there. You were too she young, right? Yeah, I was 13 at the time, but my mom was there, and she said she was crying in the finish line. She was just so happy, and um, I don't know the whole the whole thing, like the conditions, the the run, the sleeve, the in, it being in Canada is like something that I feel like this is will forever hold as like the most I'd say inspiring run in in my eyes for uh, for Canadian riders, uh, and honestly, riders. Everywhere. Everywhere. It's yeah, yeah. This is Daniel Mambike. So special. Canadian amateur Canada, winner. Canada, Canadian flag, cool. Yeah, it was just like I don't know. Look at that guy. Beautiful. Look at that guy. That's to be honest, that's so crazy. Just like didn't hold back and you know just wrote it like it was dry, I guess. And it's it's crazy because the stuff that we ride at home, the stuff that I ride now is what he grew up riding. And it's just so fast and loose. And it's just, you can see it in his style of riding that that's where it comes from because... It started to rain. It seemed like the race was over, like what was going on in your head at the start. I was scared. I know G was going really early because of his crash. So I tried not to think about it. But I was like, damn it, he's got a good course. And I just tried to ride it without any expectations. I tried to ride it fast like I was in practice and it was so slippery I was just <laughs> sliding everywhere so just really stoked to get a clean run I felt great and home soil I don't think there's a better place in the world for me to win this is about as good as it gets for me there's not much to add um, how will you celebrate tonight oh just have a beer with the teammate and uh, have a good time, that's about it. We're gonna, we go out to Crankworks right away, so off to the next race. Now looking to the overall, it, um, you made it interesting again because G dominated before. Um, what, are, what are your goals for the rest of the season? Well, I know G still has a big, big gap on me, but we still have two more World Cups and anything can happen. And really, I'm not too concerned about that part at the moment. I'm just going to try to ride consistent the way I have. And I like the next two World Cup tracks, so I'm looking forward to them. Thank you very much and congratulations again. Thank you. Thanks a lot. That was cool to see. That was cool to watch. Wasn't it? Yeah, I man. really was, wasn't it? I've not seen, I haven't watched Stevie race since, you know, since he was racing. I haven't seen any of the replays back or anything. It's, that's amazing to no, see. No, that's right. Yeah, brilliant. I feel like I haven't like heard him talk. Like I like I've watched like the the tribute video and stuff, but I, I feel like I haven't heard him talk like that and since I talked to him last. So that's like a pretty pretty crazy thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's emotional that isn't it? Seeing him yeah. right there in front of you chatting away like normal. Absolutely. That's right. Like it was yesterday. Yeah, yeah for sure. Heavy. He was so committed, wasn't he? Yeah, and that's 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 what made him just that's what made him so unique, you know, that how committed he would be at those sections. You know, I bet you boys are at the top thinking it's raining, it's wet, I'm gonna take it easy, but Stevie that wouldn't have crossed Stevie's mind, you know. There's a bit of me that thinks it might have made him go harder. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like he had nothing Absolutely. to lose that day, yeah. did he? Yeah, I'd say so. My yeah, mum said that, um, that you can't do it. They basically they basically carried him down to the podium from there. Like, you know, he's like. Did uh, they really? Yeah, like, yeah. 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 My mom, yeah, my mom said it was just. It was absolutely amazing. <laughs> you wow. need to remember that. Oh, one. boy. <laughs> Finn, when are you going to step up? When I was sat in the hot seat. <laughs> you say, when am I going to step up? So, sorry, G. Yeah, I, know. I was just saying to Phil, I don't know when he's going to step up because, you know, Stevie is the only Canadian ever to win a downhill World Cup, which, which I can't believe because Canada, I don't know, it just seems like you own mountain biking. What's going on there, Finn? Well, we've had a lot of free ride influence until Stevie. You have. So um, Stevie sort of inspired a lot of kids that it's possible to, to do it coming from Canada and we're not just a free ride country. And I think that it's definitely coming in the next couple of years. We have a lot of really good riders up and coming. Mark Wallace, me, Magnus Manson. There's a lot of guys on the World Cup, Forrest Riesco. And there's a lot of young kids that I see around my area that are 
that are all really good riders. And um, I think that Stevie has been a huge inspiration for the younger generation. And I feel like that's just going to lead to more and more wins for uh, Canada. And I hope in the future it'll be like France and uh, we'll have we'll have a bit of a, a monopoly on the World Cup eventually. <laughs> Well, I must admit, you know what I mean? I feel like it should be like that because mountain biking's so big there. And like you say, I mean, when we went riding in, um, where was that place we went riding just outside Whistler? It was unbelievable where we uh, shot meets oh, with you. Squamish. Squamish, excuse me. The riding you got yeah. is insane, isn't it? Eh? Yeah, Super it good. Yeah, that's, that's all like, a lot of it used to be free ride based and like a lot of stunts and stuff. But now it's sort of the trails associations have been building like really good, fast, sick, downhill tracks and you see it because there's a lot of kids coming up from squamish that are 13 14 15 16 that will be coming into the junior ranks in the next few years that are all super super riders like blows me away how skilled they are so i'm uh, looking That's forward to from seeing you i'll take it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i saw your video the other day dude was that as big as it looked the, yeah 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 that was on vital and oh, stuff yeah. that big that was huge mate yeah, we got a bit of a fisheye lens on it, so it looked a little bit bigger, but it was definitely, I'd say, around 40 feet. So it was, yeah, a bit of a huck. So, G, I'm going to ask you a question, G. What was it like for you that day? Because was it over 200 points going into that race? And then and you dominated that the first part of the season. You'd won the first two, second at round three, second here at round four. I mean... You've done everything really right. The World Cup should have gone yours. Was it testament to just what a competitor Stevie was that eventually it would be him that came out on top? Yeah, it was. You know, like you say, I was I was on a good one. I was on a, a solid season and I'd had a strong start. And you know, Stevie was there, but he was, you know, he was he was he was kind of creeping closer. But it wasn't until this round where I think you know Stevie realised his potential. You know, I think this round kind of woke him up you know it, it 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 stoked that fire in stevie that's that that you know was burning for this for this season and you know when when i was sat in the hot seat I, I saw that you know and i was i watched him cross the line and i saw him look back and then as he looked back around you know you could see his eyes you know he was he was firing and you know when i shook his hand afterwards and, and said well done you know he was buzzing he had he was he was glowing you know it was like he'd you know, you don't see that in people very often. You know how how fired up he was, and it was it was pretty wild to see. I mean, I guess for Stevie that would be like a win for you in Fort William. Do you know what I mean? Like, but as he was the only Canadian to do it, even even more impotence to win on home soil that never happened before. Yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? Sam, what do you what were your you know memories of Stevie really watching that? Must have brought something back to you. Yeah, just basically that that's when he kind of started like he knew that he was because like what Finn said before like in half jail when he started to kind of know that he could win races and kind of just working on from that he was just like just knew that he could do it and then he just got better from then just he was such a strong rider and he and once he knew he could do it then he just kept doing it eh? and he was just he just loved riding his bike and that was the main thing for him he just enjoyed yeah. riding and going fast and he just loved Loved it like we did, so it was awesome to see him do do the thing he loved. Yeah. He was definitely one of the lads, wasn't he? Definitely. Well, oh, for listen, sure. Sam, definitely, yeah. Sam and, Sam and G, we're going to say thank you for joining us. It's been absolutely incredible to have you along with us this afternoon watching this race back. Um, and we're going to have a, a short break now, and then we're going to be back with Gabe Fox, team manager of Da Vinci, and Mark Wallace, who was, uh, who was Steve's um, teammate back then. So thanks a lot, lads. It's been a pleasure. Nice thanks one, boys. Up, Cheers. Nice one. Thanks, See you, boys. Man. See you later. Finn, yeah, See you're ya. staying around, I think. Yeah. Stevie Smith, thinking back to Monson Am when he produced, I think, one of the greatest runs we've seen. And his fastest at... Split number one, Cuddy, 122 on the clock. The track here in Norway is, is quite special to me. It was uh, my first ever World Cup win. Great memories coming back here and um, obviously high expectations. But in the end, it's just a place I have really fun and, and really enjoy. I feel almost at home here. This is looking like a great run. Look at the pace carried in here. Oh, out to the outside there as well. 
Well, I don't think many guys probably live mountain biking, down here racing as hard as Steve Smith, you know, trains, lives it. What's the time going to tell us? One turn away. Is he going to go fast? Is he going to be that time of Danny Hart? Yes, he does. 1.641 up for Steve Smith from Canada. And he keeps his World Cup dream, oval title dream alive there. Seeing Stevie coming through, you know, I saw him when he was quite young and he's he's been working at it for a while and it's it's cool to see, you know, how he's approached it and really made sure he, he gets to the top and you know this season's shown that he's he's there and he can do it. A titanic battle for Tiafen, the pressure on him this afternoon it is immense. So he's out by point two five oh Athens on course and he's fast! Goes off the big wooden boot and has to squash it! He comes down the line, he's not gonna go fast this! It's not messing with my head. I'm, I'm here and I'm going to do exactly how I race every other race and, and do as best as I can. Stevie Smith and the momentum in his corner at the moment. The Chainsaw Massacre is on fire! Surely this is going to be it. Only a few seconds away from winning the World Cup for the very first time. Stevie Smith attacks. Here he comes. Oh, look at the time! 1.3 Stevie Smith, first Canadian ever to win the overall title. It's time to scrabble. This is a dream come true. This has been the most pressure I've ever had in my entire life, and I'm just so pumped to come away with a win. Well, definitely emotional watching that back, eh? How are you, Gabe? Yeah, How are you, Mark? Thanks for joining me. us. <laughs> that was well, a no, good one. That was unbelievable. A Great show there. That was awesome to watch. That was awesome to see that again. Wasn't it great, Gabe? I mean, you're his team manager. Just to, but that was, I mean, that run in St. Anne, that kind of, that's everything about Stevie. No compromise, just flat out, you know what I mean? Pushing it all the way, no matter what, everything against him. That, that was kind of his spirit, wasn't it? Definitely. It was, uh, you know, he, he had a big passion for it and, uh, and, uh, Nothing was going to get in his way of doing it. He just he just went for it, and and that really showed in that run. It was you know the conditions. It was wet, and he and he let her go. Absolutely, did Mark? You were teammates with him. I mean, what, what do you remember about that day there? Um, I think I just remember him like being really wanting the win and being convinced he could do it, and he wasn't going to let anything stop him from doing what he could to make that happen. And uh. Yeah, he put in a good one and, and didn't make it happen. It's close, really but did, it made, yeah. for, made for a pretty exciting day. And I mean, he kind of you were you were kind of under his wing, right? I mean, you came up under Stevie, didn't you? He was like uh, he kind of took you on. You, you, you're both on Vancouver Island. I mean, would you attribute some of your riding to him? Because what one thing I noticed about Stevie, and when I came to you and I shot with you, is that you're as fearless as him. You will send it just as big as him, and thin as well. I mean, it's the Canadian way, though, isn't it, to go big? You're not scared, are you, over there? I don't know. He had a he had another level of uh, of no. Uh, yeah, I'd agree. Yeah, he, uh, he definitely did kind of kind of bring me in, but showed me what was possible, and actually introduced me to Gabe and got me the ride and everything. So, yeah, it was a, it was a big part of it of, of me racing World Cups and me racing the way I do now. Finn, you know, you said that put a tear in your eye watching that. How well did you know Steve, and, and and what was your memories of him? Because you were, like you say, you were just thirteen years old then. I mean, he must have been a massive influence on you. Yeah, definitely. I didn't know Stevie nearly as well as Mark, but um, I knew him just because I looked up to him a lot. And even when we went to Vancouver Island to go riding, he'd be like, you know, open to do laps with just a kid. So that was definitely a pretty cool thing. And when I was, uh, I first got sponsored by SRAM when I was fourteen. Um, it's kind of funny cause today's mother's day in Canada and I had made like a, a funny remark to my mom and Stevie said to me, this is one of a good memory that I have was like, if you don't treat your mom well, I'm going to beat you up. And like, <laughs> just like that, that was kind of the type of person he was. It was like, he was definitely pretty loose and like got wild, but he was, uh, you know, a really good person. And, um, yeah, it's just crazy to have that type of inspiration um and a canadian rider to look up to and like you can definitely see it in how how mark rides uh mark and stevie ride quite similar in my eyes marks are yeah. just a little bit less loose but uh yeah it's yeah no honestly Pretty special you can to see, see that video 
and you're right in what you say, Mark, about about Mark being like Finn, about like um, Mark being like Stevie, because. I don't know. Remember when we were shooting for meets and you showed me that gap that you do every downhill run? It was just a tiny compression that you went about 60 feet off. And I was like, well, yeah, you're not right either, <laughs> basically. <laughs> like, you, we couldn't do yeah, it because but... it was raining. But I just it just it just filled me with like, yeah, these Canadians are nuts. What's wrong with them? Basically, I, won't, I, I don't want to admit that. It. That was Steve. I was following him. Steve and found I that gap there, did the he? Same one. It, you know, it as well. I think I we're all just doing what it. he was doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just following <laughs> following his line still. Yeah, and I mean, years actually, Gabe. Some years of injury followed after that, didn't they? But we saw him back at his best in in um, in 2016, really, didn't we? At the start of the year, but he, I think, his he was so uh, determined. There was he was kind of there was nothing that would take him away from his goal, would he? I mean, when he'd, he'd have an injury, but he would come back as hard on day one as the day that he'd done the injury right yeah and it's every time steve rode his bike it was you know it was one speed it, you know it, he yeah. he would he wasn't going to let a bad day of riding and it was all about have, having enjoyment on the bike it was like full gas ride fast hit the big jumps hit the big lines and that's what that's what he wanted you know he he, he didn't he didn't want to ride or do anything half half ass so to speak and he didn't. He didn't do anything no. half fast. What was he like? Absolutely not. <laughs> well, no, absolutely not. What was he like? Because you know, you were his team manager, and he was he was a pretty wild character. But but, but he was also really professional, right, at the races. Uh, you know, I mean, by that, he, he enjoyed. He liked party as well, didn't he? Yeah, he was. A, you know, you could say he was a well-rounded individual. He wanted to race hard. He wanted to party hard. <laughs> he, very well. Yeah. <laughs> He was a very, a very, uh, a very loyal individual. I would say as well. Definitely, you know, was uh, took care of uh, friends, family, uh, you know, other riders within his his circle group. Um, you know, to his character with teammates, and I, Mark would would know about this. Nick Beer would know about this. Is he was, and even Brooke, he, they they would share. He would he would rather one of his teammates win the race than someone else because he would were working as a team he would have a part in that victory as well it, he was definitely a, a a great teammate i think to a lot of the other riders that he was with it was you know he was more stoked if the if his teammate won that's it's it's quite it's that simple right it's a very loyal yeah. friendly you know what? tight-knit group that's for sure i can and you said I can that kind of mark a- like Go on, Finn. Excuse me. You carry on. Um, I could kind of attest to that. I mean, I wasn't his teammate or anything, but at my very first Junior World Cup in Lourdes, I was talking to him and I was like, oh, I'm like nervous, like this, that, and the other thing about not winning. And Stevie's like, what are you talking about? I was like, well, I'm nervous. He's like, why? He's like, just go ride your bike. And that was basically, he was pretty he said straight, that to me. right? And I came down, I came down and won. And he was like, what I tell you, man. And that, like, it's just like that unwavering confidence and it's just that that belief you know he had that in himself yeah. and he had that in other riders and it, it it showed and um i think um it was my first year junior i think it was probably one of the best days um in canadian downhill history actually because stevie was second mark was eighth um i won the junior category and like just that race itself was like the first race that stevie was really back and it was cool because there's that influence that he had even from just that 2013 year had carried on so quickly and yeah it's amazing and he's, i was he's clearly on that he's, side of sorry no go on guy yeah with uh and with with what going to what finn said there he definitely really wanted the the future generation of canadians i know that's been touched on a few times but Every time the Canadians didn't do well, he was like he was getting frustrated, and to to and to see all these fast young kids coming up like Finn and Mark and this, I would say uh, Steve had a great sense of pride that there were other Canadians, you know, coming up behind him. That's that's yeah. definitely for sure. Yeah, because he did spearhead it. I mean, it's been a long, long time since we've seen. Canadians do well at downhill racing, which is crazy. We've had a question in here on, on social, Mark. I'm going to ask you it because Finn and Gabe both said that, that you kind of remind them of Stevie. Which rider reminds you of Stevie nowadays? Uh, I think right now I'd have to go with Omri. Like just an all-out yeah. for racing and riding bikes. And he definitely 
you know, as Gabe said, is like a well-rounded individual. Like it's, yeah, he knows yeah, how to party. He knows how to ride. And on the bike, it's exactly yeah. And he and he does both very a little well. bit in Amari's in Amari's riding. Just the just like the intensity of it, you know, you can like feel it yep. even though you're not there. And like with Stevie, you could feel the exact same thing. Yeah. And it's funny, like Amari got his first win and then won two more in a row. And with Stevie, he basically did the exact same thing and won the overall. And it's like pretty, yeah. you know, you can, yeah. there's a bit of yeah, a comparison a there for sure. Story. I mean, guys, it's a lot about, you must remember. Sorry, God. No, you go, go, go. It's much more interesting what you've got to say. Go on. <laughs> it's uh, it's all about that raw speed, and it's about harnessing it and having the hunger in your eyes and just attacking. And I'll agree with Mark. There's a lot of similarity there as well. With like, you know, you look into Amory's eyes, and he's just, he's just. You can tell he's he's hungry and angry, and he's going to attack. And we saw that, and we've seen that in a couple of his runs as well. Yeah, he's a. He's a kind of wild men that need taming a little bit for the big day rather than a sort of person that perhaps has to build themselves up for the big day i suppose do you know what i mean and when they can tame that like energy and that whatever it is that they can be absolutely brilliant like we just saw can't they i mean that's how it is isn't it yeah yeah for sure what what do you think gabe about the overall i mean he came into this race 200 points down there was two races left after this race G had, had dominated the early part of the season and actually still finished second here in Mont Saint Anne. Did, 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 was there a moment when Stevie said to you, This overall is still on? Or did he ever give up on it? I mean, it took some belief because I remember the race in Lear Gang so clearly and talking to you just before it. Yeah, I think that, you know, at the start of the season, Stevie had some, you know, he was definitely on track for, for a good year. Um, he was, I left to, I, he had his best ever finish in Fort William, which G won, you know, traditionally Steve did very poorly at, at, at Fort William. And so that was, a, that was a bit of a turning point within our group saying, okay, well, he's really become a, 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 a more well-rounded rider. He's, you know, I, I, I'd like to say, I think he was second in, in Fort William. I could be he's wrong third. there, but third. Okay. There you go. Third. But I don't think he'd ever podiumed in Fort William before. I think it, it was something that was a dramatic step forward. And, uh, and I don't, he never gave up. He definitely didn't. He, he, uh, but this race here in Mount St. Anne, that was the, you know, with the changing of the conditions and everything, that was really the, the point which he, he'd done well in half yell previously, obviously. And then, um, and Leo gang, yeah. uh, I, he's, he, he traditionally done very well there with many podiums in the past and so, yeah, it's, uh, it was definitely, he knew it could be done. And, you know, later in the season, we saw that with, with, um, when riders come in after days of training and practice, they come in and you can see the confidence and this, this race, every race moving for the last two races of the season, the confidence was, was crazy with the guy. He, he was so calm, collected and, and it, it was, it, you knew there was going to be some good results coming after this. That's for sure. Yeah, that's a nice way to be as a team manager, no doubt. Listen, Finn, we're going to say uh, goodbye to you now, Finn. Thanks for joining us. We're going to bring Brooke back, actually. But uh, it's been incredible. I bet you enjoyed watching that. And I'd just like to ask you before yeah, we go, like, what, what, what did, you know, did Steve lay the path for you as a Canadian down and was he a big part of that? Absolutely. There's, I would say there's this culture of downhill in Canada. It's, it's non-existent without Stevie. He, his influence in Canada is, is going to live forever really. And it's, it's so amazing that we have like Mark and I and all the other riders coming up is have that person to look up to because before that it was sort of Canada was an unproven country and downhill and Stevie changed the Which whole scenario. Mad. It's crazy. Yeah. Just a kid from Vancouver Island who, you know, rides the same trails that Mark and I do ev like every weekend now. And if he can do it, why not us? You know, that's and right. And I that's think right. that's, you two that's are the, the inspiration. Thing. You two are the inspiration I... for the next Canadian downers. <laughs> One last question for you, go Finn, Mark. 
I mean, really, which one of you two is going to be the next Canadian to win a downhill? I don't want to put you on the spot, but my God, it's took us, you know, we've been waiting seven years now. I mean, come on, dude. Pull your finger out. Huh? I could uh, I could get you on a little technicality here. When I was in junior, I uh, I had the fastest time of the day in Mont St. Anne. Rain affected, but fastest there you time go. of the day. Okay. And Mark, you've been fastest qualifier at the start of last year, so you, you've, been, you've been close, yeah. mate, in Maribor. Yeah, it's uh, fitter and fairly competitive. It's good. It, uh, it pushes us both. But, I mean, to be honest, I'd be, I think we'd both be pretty happy if it was either of us that got it done. Or Absolutely. Any other Canadian. I mean, any Canadian matter. to get a win would be amazing. It's Absolutely funny. Mark wrong. and I, we train together, we ride together, and then at the races, it's like every time we get to the bottom, it's like, did I beat Mark? <laughs> you know, one of those things. And I feel Who's like that, out now, that, right? competition, that competition between us is going to drive – drive us to be better and better and better because neither of us want to be beaten by the other Canadian. Um, so I think that it's, it's going to, it's bound to happen in the next few years and it will. And then from there on, there's a lot of young Canadians that will come through and, and I think, you know, take over the scene because we have, we have everything we need here. And I believe that, that it's absolutely possible. And you've all got Steve's legacy to follow. Finn, it's been an absolute pleasure. We could have you on all evening, but thank you very much for joining us, mate. We'll let you uh, we'll let you crack on there in Canada. We're going to watch Steve's run again now. We're going to bring Brooke back. But, Finn, it's been a pleasure, and uh, we'll yeah, see you soon, you. mate. See you later. Thanks very much. Nice one, bud. Thank you. Win of 2013, and it's Steve Smith. And... Uh, well, Gabby, this, what was going? Do you remember being at the top for this one, or were you down the you were down the bottom? What, what was Stevie's? What was his mindset before he went to the top? Um, you know, like Stevie's attitude is is he, he just he's he said he was going to ride it like it was dry. This is what he told us. He goes, it's 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 doable. He was he had his great result in 2010 on this track, and he and he loved it. He loved racing in Mount Saint Anne. The only stop on Canadian soil, and he, he was he was really quite confident on this, for this race. That's for sure. As you can see in his riding. Mark, I think you'd agree with me, wouldn't you? This is one of the best race runs ever, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely uh, it's one of my favorites, and I think it's one of the most impressive ones to watch for me. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing, isn't it? Between those two splits, but so he hit that left hand there pretty hard. Right, like sliding in that turn. Did you see how yeah. He Hello, Brooke. This is the best part here coming out of Rob's gap. Bam. Was he the only rider to do that gap in the race, Brooke? Can you remember? Is that right? I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure he is the only one. That's incredible, but isn't it? It shows like how committed he is to this run, and like, I mean. For the weather that he was, he was uh, dealt with. Like obviously it stopped raining, but um, yeah, that track can be pretty tough when it stops raining and and it dries out. Um, so yeah, just I mean it shows you how much um, he really put into this run, and and um, yeah, it was uh, definitely one of the best runs I've uh, witnessed so far in my career. Yeah. Gabe, you're down in the finish area now. I mean, I don't even yeah. know what was going through your mind at this point, dude. Could you believe what you were seeing? No, it was it was mental. Like that 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 wooden kicker near the bottom there. After he saw how quickly he hit that compression and it just he just launched off it right there. It was like he's going so quick, and uh, we we were losing it in the finish line. We were so fired up. It was it was awesome. It was. <laughs> It was like in Canada. It was like you know, it was it was a sense of relief, but we were fired up. I'll tell you that. That's for sure. Cool. Yeah. To see hey, Rob, you know how we were talking. Um... Go on, Brooke. You know how we were talking before about uh, that last section and carrying speed. It, Stevie really showed uh, showed it um, there from from that last split to the to the finish line. How much he pulled back. Yeah. Because I think he was like, was in, what was he, point, point 0.1 back, and then he almost pulled right. second. That's right. Nearly a second. I mean, yeah. and that can only be his pace that he comes into that last sector with, can't it? Yeah, exactly. For Look sure. And I mean, like, yeah, that's... Oh. Uh, 
to make this thing work for him. I hope everyone at home's watching this because it doesn't get. Hey, Gabby, do you know what would have made uh, made this race if Stevie had the ankle socks on? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Why <laughs> the ankle socks? <laughs> yeah, Stevie used to wear ankle, ankle socks all the time. Oh, Did he? Not the not, not the high top the ones that were like inside his shoe and there. <laughs> oh, the shoe socks, like the little ones you couldn't see. <laughs> Pretty much, they were horrible. <laughs> I didn't have him down as an ankle sock man. I won't lie. He just didn't give a shit, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Brooke, apart from the ankle socks, what are your memories of Steve? Because you were teammates with him on, uh, it was MS Evil, right, back in the day. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, know, you came through the ranks with him, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, my first memory of Steve was probably like, I think it would have been 2009 when I first went overseas and, I was sitting in uh, the grandstands in Fort William and it was this Canadian dude sitting next to me and he had, uh, I think he blew his knee out. Did he blow his knee out at Fort William that year, Gaber? I believe or it 2008. was. 2008. Yeah, he did. It was, yeah, it was either his knee or his ankle. I think it was his knee. I think you were right. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I looked at this dude and he had this top, that was like a, I don't know, it was like a Canadian top and he was just standing there and it was one of those ones that had a flap on it. You pull it up and it had a big bear underneath. And, um, <laughs> yeah, I was just like, man, this guy's, this guy's pretty sick. <laughs> and, and then... Lifelong um, friends. Yeah, I was, yeah. I mean, from there, like, I was, I kind of looked up to him from there and then I was lucky enough to join him in 2010 um, on Evil. And, um, yeah, I mean, we just, we created good memories. We got on really well. I felt like, uh, yeah, we bonded pretty good. We sort of had the same personality and, and enjoyed the same thing, racing bikes and, and partying and, and just enjoying life. And, um, yeah, I he feel like he... He was just a full-on bloke, wasn't he? He was, he was fun, wasn't he? Yeah. He was really fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, I feel like I've taken taken a lot um yeah a lot of a lot of stuff from him and how to live life and I feel like uh yeah like his life was lived sort of the same as I I like to live my life like you know my my saying is uh sleep when you're dead and I feel like Stevie was was the same yeah. and just yeah just didn't enjoy life and um yeah and take I it think, to the max uh, really mate isn't it yeah yeah it is I mean like uh, you, you don't, you don't know when when it's going to end. And I think uh, Stevie really showed like his life was really well lived. And I'm I'm glad I got to witness him winning an overall World Cup um, yeah. because that was that was pretty special. And I feel like uh, yeah, it was it was probably like the best riding I'd ever seen him seen him done. And um, I think I think it was. Probably the last, I think the last year when he was on Da Vinci, um, when he finished second in uh, in Lords, I felt like that year was gonna gonna be another good year for for him as well. That was sixteen, um, wasn't it? When yes. he came back, right? Yeah, that was he had sixteen. Injury, he had injuries after this, didn't he? Yeah. Well, I think before you got in. Yeah, that's right. Gabe, you remember that, Gabe. You might be able to put some yeah. on that. He did, did he have injuries after this? I remember it. And then he, he, he kind of had a couple of years where he, he, he – was it his ankle or something? And he came back in 16 and was really back to his best. Like you say, nearly winning Lord at round one. Yeah, so like 2014 and 2015, you could say they were injury-plagued seasons. Um, mm. He injured himself in 2014, came back at the start of 2015, re-injured himself – and I believe he might have re-injured himself at Mount St. Anne uh, in 2015 and then, you know, didn't had surgery on the ankles both the times. And uh, yeah. and then he came back at the start of 2016. And it was, um, you know, he in 2014, he had injured himself 
quite close to the start of the season so his results were quite hampered in in 2014 but and in 2015 he missed the whole chunk of the year but you that's know, right with it with his results as brooks said in lords it was definitely um he showed he was back on form so to speak uh you know, with yeah. Stevie, he does everything, you know, with what, he, what Brooke was saying as well, he does everything 100%, you know, whether it's training, whether it's riding his bike, whether it's everything. And that's that's really his character. It's uh, it's it's full gas on whatever he's doing. And it's, uh, yeah. you know, it, it, it's ride your bike, ride your moto, go camping, go ride your side by side. From 6 a.m. till 10 p.m. or midnight, it's like... And in there, he's doing a you know two hour road rider, a two hour trainer session. It's like, it's it's getting the job done. It's like, no 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 stopping. That's the that's the way he was. Yeah, he lived his life to the max. We've got a uh, we've. It's, I must say, it's absolutely amazing listening to you two talk about him as well. Mark, we got a good question here. Cky seventy eight. What would Stevie like best about the current racing? Um, this year, obviously, notwithstanding, would it be the bikes or would it be the tracks or what would he, what would he like the most? Do you think? Uh, I think maybe the the speed of the tracks right now. You know, like he always loved the really the really fast tracks like Half Hill and Saint yeah. Anne, and now there's and Leo Gang, and more and more of the tracks are are like that now. So, um, yeah, I think he'd be a, he'd be a pretty big fan of, of those high those high speed tracks, and I guess the bikes um, that well, allow you to to go faster on those tracks. And what was he like, Mark, in those, I mean, you were teammates with him before when he came, when he was going through those years of injury, did his determination ever waver? What was he going through? I mean, it must've been hard for him 15 and uh, 14 and 15 really. Yeah, I, I think it was like Gabe said, he was, he was always doing something from whatever, six in the morning to 10 PM. And when you've had broken ankles, like it really limits, limits what you can do. So I think he was, he spent a lot of time being frustrated and, um when he did was able to come back and race and or ride he he went 100 percent and then yeah ended up re-injuring himself but um, yeah that's exactly what happened way. it was I true if he it? had the option to redo it he probably wouldn't change much so just <laughs> no, how it goes i mean it must have been quite hard to watch gabe really because he was like he was trying to get back to the to the top so quickly that he did as i remember he did hurt himself again there was just no compromise with him eh and it's always silly, silly mistakes, you know, just like slipping off your pedal, you know, right, riding full speed. But it's just like, what are you doing, man? Like, <laughs> in the in his ankle socks, you know, you know, it's all yeah. blaming on those, right? <laughs> but it's uh, it, a mark, Maybe mark, and a bang on. with some high socks. <laughs> uh, you you basically, it, Mark is Mark's right. It's uh, the the frustration of not being able to. Pr- properly ride and perform at the level you want to you were he wanted to be at in 2014 and 15 it was definitely coming out for sure without a doubt you you know it when you're at that level and that comp- that much of a competitive person absolutely it must have been hard with for you. Him. yeah it must have been hard for him well, it's been amazing listening to you lot you, you chaps talk about him and stuff let's have a look mm-hmm. at some attributes that we've got from some of the world's best mountain bike riders Growing up, watching Stevie race was a huge inspiration for me to even start racing downhill. And you know, it showed all of us Canadian kids that one day maybe we could be one of the best in the world too. Long live Chainsaw. Steve was really someone special for Da Vinci as a company, but also for all its staff and riders. We were privileged to be a part of what he accomplished on and off the bike. He motivated us to work harder and made us proud at multiple occasions. Steve will be forever missed. May he ride in peace. It is an immense pride to be a Canadian racer and to follow in the steps of Steve. And sometimes, sometimes I get bummed out that he's not here to see it or see our success, but then I look at all my teammates that are here and they're there because of Steve. So Steve, I couldn't be more proud. So thank you for making us proud and thank you for showing us how to do the same. Stevie Smith. This sport sure does miss you, pal. You were dedicated, fast, good fun to be around. I sure miss you, and I know everybody else does. So hopefully you're having just as much fun as you did when you were here, wherever you are now, pal. Stevie was one fun-loving and wild character. 
There was never, ever a dull moment when he was around. Uh, his riding style represented nothing but attack. Such a pleasure to watch on track. He definitely left a, a massive void in the mountain bike community and in most of our hearts. We miss you, bro. Long with the chainsaw. Well, that one got me, I must admit. I mean, he's left an irreplaceable hole. I know it's four years on now, but it doesn't change anything, does it? You know, I mean, he, his, his character is everything about him is going to live on, you know, for you, Mark, as well. And, and uh, yeah, it's just been incredible to watch this race back, isn't it? It's been brilliant. So I'm going to say, lads, on that emotional note, I think it's time we all said goodbye. And uh, it's been absolutely fantastic to enjoy this race with you again. And, um, yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone at home for watching. And uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks with another World Cup Classic. Anything you'd like to add, Gabe? Anything you want to say finally about Steve? No, we're good. Thanks for having me. It was it was an awesome, awesome time re-watching the, the race. It was great. It, it really was, wasn't it? It was. It was brilliant. Mark, it's been it's been an emotional afternoon. Yeah. It has been, yeah. It was, uh, it was pretty cool to see that, though. It's good to good to watch the race and, and talk about Stevie. And, Brooke, thanks for joining us. Thanks for getting up so early. But, you know, well worth it for such an occasion, right. eh? Yeah, yeah, definitely well worth it. Um, yeah, thank you. Let's give it one last long-lived chainsaw and get out of here then, shall we? I reckon. <laughs> yeah. That's it, lads. Thanks very much. Long live Chainsaw. Cheers, we'll see you in a couple of weeks' time with another World Cup Classic. Thank you very much, everyone. Goodbye. Cheers. Bye. Thank you.